it's cold outside. Well, I'm so glad you said that, Abra. You know why I'm glad you said that? Because we're going to worship. And so you can increase your body temperature by standing and engaging with the Lord. Did you know that? <laughs> like Keisha's hop. Huh? Keisha, by the way, has the best um, worship movements I've seen, like, of any person. I stood next to her at the conference, and she has, like, she has these cool things that she does, and I'm like, man, I wish I looked as cool as she does when she do does these things, because she's, she has, like, these, of course, pregnant, I can't do any of this, but, you know, she, she does this, this cool thing, and I'm like, I wish I looked as good as she does when she does this, but aren't we all glad we're just individuals in worship, right? God doesn't care. We just offer ourselves before him. <laughs> Keisha's like, I'm going to do nothing now. I'm just going to sit in the back. <laughs> it's awesome. The fun thing is everybody has their own things, right? I have quirky things I do in worship. Everybody's got different. And it doesn't matter. We're just going to offer ourselves before him tonight. So <clears throat> now that we've had a good laugh, let's engage with the Lord. <laughs>
dead can be. A dead body walking around. We had no life and no hope, God. But then you came. <laughs> and you broke through, God. You life into us, Lord. You gave us life, God. You hovered over and you released your life and your breath over us, God. And we came alive. <laughs> Thank you for life, God, for our eyes that have been opened, Lord, to see you. Just thank him where you are tonight for that. Thank you, Lord, for life, God, for life that we could not attain on our own, Lord. <laughs> you breathed life into our dead body, God, and you caused us to awaken, Lord, to a love that we have never known, God.
partner's love and the thoughts of sin and of self and of strife. Lost in that rapture of love. Yes, Lord. Jesus, we want to get lost in that rapture of your love tonight, God. Lord, I just ask even right now just for a greater revelation of your love to come for a greater revelation of that love, God. That love that is unfailing. That love that knows no bounds, God. That love that's undefeated. That love that breaks every chain, God. That love that pulls us out, God. That love that pursues. That love that protects. That love that endures, God. We thank you for love, Lord. We thank you that you are love. Yes, God. God, we thank you that you aren't a loveless God that just has us walking with robots, but you pursue us. Your heart is for us. Oh God, what love is this? That your mind be full of thoughts of me. What love? What love? Lord, I just ask that that tonight, God, that you would permeate our hearts. That your love would land in new places, Lord. That the revelation of who you are would land in new places. I just break off hurt right now in the name of Jesus. I break off abandonment in the name of Jesus. I cast down offense in the name of Jesus. And I call his love in. Rejection, you have no place. You have no hold. We just call on the love, the perfect love of a father. The perfect love of a father to come cover. Shame. You have no place. You must be removed. You must be removed. There's no root of you to remain. Fear, we cut you down. Let love come. Fear, we cut you down. love is real I know that you know that or you wouldn't be here but his love is real it's not um, it's not your hallmark card love you it has weight it's it's tangible it removes things from high places. It removes stuff in low places. It comes in, it takes up residence, it fills us, it dwells. And I just feel like tonight, like the Lord wants you to know. <laughs> the Lord wants you to know that his love is greater. His love is, it's all consuming. See, the thing is, and I am not preaching, but the thing is, he's looking for an army of laid down lovers. He, he loves that we can war and have his warrior nature. He loves that, he loves, he loves all the facets of who we are, but what he's looking for isn't a good speaker. What he's looking for isn't a worker bee. What he's looking for is someone that has laid down their life out of love, a laid down lover. Because listen, <laughs> to quote a Chris Ballatin, Passion looks like sacrifice to someone who's not in love. He's looking for somebody that their heart is beating and yearning for him. Guys, his heart is beating and yearning for you and me in the same way. And I feel like tonight he just wants you to know. He wants you to know the way his heart is moved by you. He wants you to know that when when your gaze meets his, he stops and catches his breath. He wants you to know that he pursues you. 
He wants you to know the way that his heart is moved when your heart is turned toward him. He wants you to know the way that he desires you. You know how you can't get enough of him. He can't get enough of you. So there's this thing of apathy. There's this thing of, I don't even know. It's just like, ugh. Yeah, love is the answer. There's this thing of offense, love is the answer. There's this thing of shame, love is the answer. There's this thing of bondage, love is the answer. There's this thing of hurt, love is the answer. Because it, it's that love that moves us. He lavished that love on us, that prodigal love, that love that is wasteful. And when he wastes his love on you, you can waste your life. So tonight I just feel like, you know when you gotta shake the sillies out? I feel like we gotta love the apathy out, man. Like, it's winter, but come on, you're an overcomer. <laughs> you're an overcomer. So let that love motivate you to press. And like, it's not about, it's not about work and assignment, but guys, let that love drive you. Let that love drive you to want to pursue more of him. Let that love drive you to want to be in the word. Let that love drive you to want to do your assignments. Let that love drive you because it's not about task mastering. It's not about, um, oh my gosh, I signed up for another thing. It's about this love that moves us. It's this love that Paul said he poured out his life like a drink offering. If When I look that love in the face, I have no other response than to pour my life out, than to give absolutely everything I have. So if you find yourself in that spot tonight where you're like, man, I just want to quit. I just want to give in. I just don't know if I can do this. Ugh, you know, like I just want to call it like the lazy boy spirit. Like I just want to take a nap. If you're in that spot, look at love. Meditate on his love. If you find yourself struggling with with the thoughts toward yourself or with sin, or look, look at that love. Keep your mind on that love. It's It's that love that compels us. It changes everything, guys. It's the game changer. It moves us from a place of, um, this place of like, okay, yeah, I'm doing this thing, to being lovesick. He's coming back for a lovesick bride. <laughs> He's in love with her. <laughs> Do you know what it's like to be the only one in love in a relationship? It sucks. To be the crazy <laughs> girl, we've all been there. Like love, like, <laughs> like I don't wanna do that to Jesus. Like, I love him. I love him. So, Lord, God, oh, we thank you for love, God. Oh, thank you for love. Lord, may we never be motivated by anything but that. That's what we want to live and move and breathe out of that love, God, that overflow of love with you. Jesus. <laughs> Thank you that you love us. It sounds so simple, but thank you for the way you love. We love you, King. We love you, Savior. Love you, friend. Love you, Daddy. Yeah. Yeah. Man, guys, he's so good. So good. So tonight, we have, I'm really excited about tonight, guys. Yeah. Tonight we have the ladies trifecta. <laughs> Pastor Lisa is uh, teaching the pioneers. Alden is teaching the second years and I'm teaching the first years. Yes. Yeah. You know you're in a good house when they let the ladies speak. <laughs> For real though. <laughs> it's not a joke. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited. I'm excited for that. I'm bummed because we can't hear each other, but I'm excited for that. Um, but just a reminder about Accelerant. If you want posters to hang up, let me know. I can get you some. Um, if you haven't registered yet with your promo code, please do so. Um, it makes it makes um, our life easier in the office just to keep track of numbers and those kind of things. And obviously, it's all about making our life easy. But um, it just helps. Don't wait till the last minute. So sign up with your promo code for Accelerant. Um, tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. Tell anybody you want to tell, but invite people. But I really want to encourage you um, to, to really put it before the Lord. Um, if there's somebody that he would have you have, have you by the land for them, 
If there's somebody that he would have you buy a ticket for, if there's someone that he would have you bless in that way, because um, because it's not it's not just about a conference, it's not just about hearing a speaker, but it's about changing this area. It's about changing culture. It's about bringing. I mean, we're pioneering something here, guys. It's about bringing something to someone that may not have ever heard it. So I really want to encourage you to ask the Lord um, if there's somebody somebody he wants you to sow into. Um, just really briefly, because I feel like I'm supposed to say it. Um, this weekend when we were at Firestorm, I was at a restaurant, and I was paying, and I was like, I had a word for the kid, and I was like, listen, bro. And I and he like looked at me and with this this hope, this expectation. And he just looked at me and he was like, who said that? And I just looked at him like square in the face and I was like, Jesus, Jesus. And he goes, yeah, I used to be spiritual, but I know I just need to wake up. Mm. And see, there's people wow. <laughs> that you can you can sound the alarm for and help wake up. And I really feel like this conference is a vehicle to help bring them to that place. So I really want to encourage you to even ask the Lord, who can I help wake up? And not in this haughty, prideful way, but like this kid was just honest, like, yeah, I need to wake up. Like, I need to be awakened. He said after he said, I need to wake up awakened. And so ask the Lord, who has dormant dreams? Who has destiny they're not pursuing? Who needs to be awakened to this love, awakened to this kingdom? And how can you as a pioneer sow into their life and sow into this kingdom by inviting them? I am not going to talk anymore because I'm like, um, <laughs> the Oscars were last night. You're good. I know. And you're already playing the music and clearly I haven't <laughs> left the stage. Can roll. <laughs> Second years, you can roll out to um, out to uh, the great room. First years, you can grab your tables. Third years, you're in the nursing mother's room, lounge, whatever it is. Um, and uh, yeah, have a great night, guys. Get some Jesus. Woo! Hey, Lisa, can I snag you real quick for like? 20 seconds. Okay, so guys, grab the tables so we can hop into our DVD, please. Poor favor. You'll get a break later. So please grab the tables. Come on, chastity. I'm just kidding. I know, I know. Okay, first years, take a seat.
Take a seat by the tables. I don't want to have to do like a little icebreaker thing to get y'all to shake up tonight or anything, but I got I to gotta see her alive here. Oh, mama, sometimes sitting is an effort. It's just ugly. It's beautiful, <laughs> says Debbie. I know. I'm like, ah. Oh. Okay, who are we missing? Is everybody, all the first years in here? Did he, does he have that set up back there? Can, can you find him and say, what are you doing? Are you guys okay on light? Do you have enough light to write up here? Okay, the light's okay. We just need, I, did, I need him to cue it up. Okay, what am I doing? We don't know. Look at here, I just got, I just got, I know, I was just going to say, I just got registrations. It's all you people who forgot. And you're like, oh, shoot. I'm just kidding. It's okay. Hey, better late than never. It's not really late, so don't, you're fine. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Kurt's here, right? Who else are we missing? Well, I mean, who, who are we missing that's here that has gone and taken a break that I need to whoop? No, Penny's ill. I, she just texted me and said that their house has a stomach bug. I know. And Jillian has it, so make sure you sanitize and pray for people. <laughs> you do both. Well, hopefully you didn't eat the same thing she ate or something. I don't know. Today is the 23rd, yes. What would you say? There you go. Oh, Keisha. It's Keisha. It's Ke Keisha's in trouble, but no, I'm just kidding. I just say, do both. Sanitize, right? We do what we should, and then we also pray for them. In Jesus' name, be healed. But don't touch none of my stuff. <laughs> I had it once. I do not want it again. Ooh, no, no. Man, I'm telling you. I was like, I'm just doing this because we're waiting for Polly to queue up the video, but um, when I, I just, we just had the, like, the flu this time, so we got the stomach bug a while ago, and then we just had the like the flu, cold, sinuses, you know, all that. No, not woo. <laughs> and I literally was like, I said to Sean, I'm like, do you know how evil it is to make a, a pregnant woman sick? Like, it's like tormenting. It's like really from the devil because you're just like so, you're already, don't, you don't, you're, your life is not your own. So, so then like you have pain in your body already. And then you're like, seriously. And you don't know, like, is this from, me being pregnant, or am I like, or is this a symptom? I need to find something to take for it, or just like nobody knows. Are we good? About ready? <clears throat> totally. It was hilarious, too, because Sean is the same. Well, he was joking around about how Will Hart was like, I lost 10 pounds and nobody's noticed. That's pretty bad when nobody notices you lost 10 pounds. And like Sean, he did the, had the same thing. Like, he lost like so, like a ton of weight while he was sick, and and but my mom did notice, so must be he's not too bad. So <laughs> my mom was like, "What happened to you?" <laughs> uh, okay, so tonight we have Chris Valentin, manifestations of the spirit. Amen. Let's roll, Polly D. Well, what are you guys uh, learning? What have you learned in the last week? Thing. Yes, go ahead and just stand. Oh, go ahead. Got it. There we go. There's a the mic. We're ready. Um, I learned that uh, that servanthood is my assignment, and that um, intimacy with God is my life source, and that um, can't remember the third one, but I but I learned it. You did. Um, <laughs> I know where to go to find it. But yeah, who'd that, you learn that from? Uh, Bill Johnson's book, Dreaming with God. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. Somebody else. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. Good. Um, I've been learning that I don't have to be jealous of what people have because I can have it too, and I, have, I can have more of what they have also. You can have more than they have. Yes. Absolutely. That's a good reason to not be jealous. <laughs> I learned exegesis and hermeneutics. Really? <laughs> Woo! 
And uh, why'd they do that to Jesus? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I also learned a lot about lifestyle, um, and practice makes perfect. That's good. Practicing words of knowledge and prophetic. You think practicing makes perfect? Um. <laughs> well, you said you learned it, so I just yes, thought I'd ask. I'm learning you. about it. Are you learning about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is it practice well, that makes perfect, we or is it perfect practice that makes perfect? What? Say that again. Does practice make perfect, or does perfect practice make perfect? Perfect practice. Because if you practice perfect. the wrong thing enough times, you'll get in a habit of doing it wrong. Right. <laughs> Just a thought. I don't That's know. That's a good. That's a good. <laughs> <laughs> What can I say? I'm so impressed with myself already this day. <laughs> Obviously joking. Okay. Oh, there you are. Hi. How are you? Good. You look um, good in pink. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Um, I'm learning to laugh at the lies of the enemy. Oh, that's good. It's so fun, too. <laughs> Me and my roommates, we have a great time doing that. <laughs> what kind of lies does he talk to you about? Um, what? Talk in the mic. Oh, right. Um, basically, I guess a few of them would just be... Um, the other night we were saying that there's no way that this, one of our roommates, there's no way she's going to finish this working on for three months. We laughed about that one. <laughs> we, <laughs> That's good. We laughed about, um, there's no way my roommate's going to find a job. There's, <laughs> there's no way that people get healed when you pray for them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's lots of them. Yeah, you're, you're laughing just while you're doing it. That's good. <laughs> Go ahead. Someone else? Where are you? Okay. Um, I oh, you look good in blue. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I learned that I am a solution looking for a problem. Whoa. Mm, I like that. I need to write that down. You're a solution looking for a problem. Remember that if you're the wrong solution, then you, today's solutions will be tomorrow's problems. There's another good word right there. Go ahead. Okay. You look good in black. Thanks. I like wearing black. We need okay. some guys to stand up too. Come on, man. Okay. I have a lot, but I, I won't tell it now. Okay. Um, so anyways, I've been praying for boldness, and I've been really timid about like, oh, can I go pray for them? I don't know. They won't get healed. All those lies. And so um, I was sitting out to dinner by myself the other night, and I was, I, I just whipped out my Bible, and I started reading. And these people were like looking at me, and I was like, hi, you know? And they were watching me, and this guy, he had a promise keeper's hat on, and I was like, okay, that's cool. And I started talking to them where I was sitting. And then all of a sudden, I went up to them and started talking to them. And they're like, so what church do you go to? I'm like, oh, Bethel. And they're like, oh, Bethel, huh? And I was like, and it totally would have been so intimidated before. And then he, like out of nowhere, he's like, yeah, this is my wife and her mom just had a stroke like two days ago. And I'm like, can I pray for her? And I've never, like, I don't even know where it came from. Oh, that's like awesome. I had no longer, no fear, no um, nothing. I that's just, awesome. I just jumped in and I learned that if you just totally just jump in and run after what you want, it, it will totally show up and he'll totally give it to you. That's so just, awesome. you just have to take that step of faith that's to just run word. after it. And ever since then, I've lost all my fear to just talk about God and to that's just run after healing and say, you're going to awesome. show up when Come I on. ask for healing. You're going to, you're going to heal them. So yeah. Anyways. You know, you can be by yourself, but you're never alone. Yeah. That's totally true. That's so true. You just, you just figured that out, huh? Yeah. It took me long enough, but I got there. No. That's right. Um, Unless you're in an airplane. Because then it says, lo, I'm with you always. <laughs> Not necessarily high. Yes, dear. Hi, um, I'm learning that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Yeah. And that um, we can create the kind of um, circumstances that we live in around wow. us. Uh, so words create worlds, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's I... good. Okay. Are you nervous? Well, I wanted to t tell you something. Yeah, go ahead. My roommate Jessica and I live in a place with lots of like, like this, the like abuse kind of you know yeah like, and there's this little boy who lives under us and like I really have like a heart for him because there's lots of screaming in his life you know and our downstairs neighbors were like screaming the other night and I just started crying for a little this little boy and 
I was like trying to read Bill's book, but I couldn't because it was so loud. I had just read the part about death and, you know, that part. Life and death, yeah. Yeah, and so I, like, had to go and run and get Brian and Jen's CD, and I just, like, started worshiping in our living room because I was like, I have to change the environment. Like, That's awesome. And, like, okay, and, like, Jesus totally, like, the the fighting, like, stopped. and subs- I was just like, I don't know. It was really exciting because I saw it happen. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. That's real. That's a good word. I like that. Yes. Hi, Chris. Look at this. A man is standing. Good. Uh, oh, 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 oh. You have a testimony about tools? Not right now. Okay. I'm learning that circumstances don't dictate my behavior. Oh, that's My emotional good. state doesn't dictate um, how I react. Yeah. And that every single moment, especially stressful ones, are an opportunity to develop character. That's good. It's like the woman and her daughter who went to a, into a store, and, and when, as they were leaving, the mom said to the daughter, did you see that attitude that that, guy gave, that cashier gave me? She says, Mom, he didn't give you that attitude. You came in the store with it. <laughs> How many of you know trials never... Nobody ever makes you mad. Mad has to be in there for it to come out. Yep. <laughs> That's, a good word. That's another good word right there. Do, do I look good in black? You look awesome in black. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, black is a prophetic color right now. I, I like the color. Five, right? I'm going to yeah. give you hidden, I'm going to give you secret, I'm going to give you hidden treasures in secret places of good darkness. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, I was just kind of, I was just kind of learning that um, more than just in my head, that walking in joy and just being joyful all the time is really good. Like, the devil doesn't like it, really. That's right. And it, and it does affect uh, environments around me and all those things. It's just, just laughing and laughing at the things that the devil says and just walking in joy when I feel kind of down. And, uh, and also, the other thing I was learning, too, is um, not just something that's in my head, and I was learning it more, that when, I just ste- when I'm stepping out, it's God's increasing things, and like a lot of times I ask him for more, and then when he gives, if I feel mm. like he gives me a weird word, I don't want to tell somebody. And so, Lord's helped me to do that. And I was That's right good. on the last two times I did it. So, yeah. What, was the word weird? Um, yeah, I was praying for <laughs> down in San Francisco just on uh, the weekend. Oh, that's why it was on, weird. On the ministry. No explanation team. needed. And the Lord told me, I, was, I saw this girl, and it was just like the first word that came to mind was more hair. And I'm like, oh, why would I say more hair? This is really weird. And I was like, I got to do it because it's really strong. And I did. And I was like, does that mean anything to you? She's like, oh, yeah. She says, I love playing with people's hair. And I just told Jesus that uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to touch his hair. And I wanted to play with his hair. And wow, I was like, dude, that's, that's awesome. awesome. I can't believe <laughs> That's good. So, it's kind of, it was awesome, though. It was. I laughed awesome. a lot about it yeah. later. I had a, a very wealthy friend who owned a trucking company that was going through a very hard time in his life, and, and uh, he was discouraged and depressed, and so he went to see a psychiatrist, a very, very expensive psychiatrist, flew halfway across the country to see him. Did I tell you the story? And um, so he walks in and, you know, has an appointment, walks in to see the psychiatrist, and it's like 400 bucks a half an hour kind of guy. And so he sits down with the guy, and the guy says, well, you know, what's going on in your life? And he says, you know, my, 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 my marriage isn't good, and, my, my son doesn't like me. My, my um, business is really going through a struggle. And he said, and so I'm depressed. And the psychiatrist made a passing comment. He says, no, happiness is an inside job. And so my friend got up, wrote him a check, and the psychiatrist is like, what? Where, are you, where are you going? You've only been here three minutes. And he said, well, I thought, he said, you said happiness is an inside job. And I thought the reason I was unhappy is because my circumstances and I didn't realize that I could control my inside. So how many know that happiness is an inside job? And when you um, make it someone else's responsibility, you're about to destroy that relationship. How many know if you, if you get married and you think it's your job to make you happy, you've already You've already destroyed the marriage. It's just a matter of when. <laughs> There's another good word right there. Is it my turn? Yes. You look All really right. good in black. Oh, thank you. Um, Did I tell you about Isaiah 45? 
<laughs> I took a mental note on okay, that. Okay, good. Uh, it was good. How do you take a mental note? Just note to Is self. that like singing? Woo! A mental note? Uh, Gotta remember. Just, it's good. Uh, but okay. much good things happening last week with um, Pastor Steve and the Tigger anointing. And there's just been, I don't know where to start. With I started, who? With Pastor Steve Becklin, was it? Backlund. Backlund. Oh, okay, good. Yes, that was amazing. Um, what else? I started journaling, and actually it started enjoying it. It wasn't something I had to make myself That's do. That's awesome. I'm just steward um, what God's giving me through that. And um, last night, we're all talking about laughing at the lies of the enemy, and last night I started realizing that laughing at the lies of the devil makes you drunk. <laughs> and That's the good. The joy just washes it all away. All so. That's good. Somebody else. Where's the other mic? Right here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, Are you cold? It. Huh? Oh. Uh. Yes. yes, actually. But, um, okay, cool. Uh, I'm learning that if you don't do your homework, they will kick you out of class. Oh. <laughs> so you have to be controlled externally. Yeah, I guess. If oh. there's not enough internal control. <laughs> And, um, but one of the gifts of the Spirit is self what? Control. Oh, that's good. Ouch. <laughs> but if you change the environment within you, then the environment around you doesn't have to control you. Ah. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. I was going to say. Good. Okay, go ahead. You were oh. trying to say something to me. I was, and also that I most, had my most powerful when I'm resting. Your most what? Powerful when I'm resting. Oh, that's good. That's a good word. Trying to get something done. Where are you from? Georgia or Canada. Either. Georgia or Canada? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. Hello. Yes. Um, just, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around what Sean Bull said. Like, I'm his favorite one kind of thing. Like, I am his favorite one. Second and, favorite. And, no, favorite. I'm sorry. <laughs> you already told me I'm his favorite. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, and also just like, just beginning to value myself you know, as that, you know, as this child kind of thing, and as this little baby boy, you know. That's good. So just trying to get that inside of my heart and everything. So. That's good. Are you valuing yourself? Starting to. Oh, that's good. Good word. Yes. Um, I'm learning that if God gives you bread when you need bread, uh, you don't have to worry next time you need bread. That's right. Yep. Once he gives you, once he answers your prayer, then you not only do you get provision, but you get ability for answered prayer, right? Yeah. Like you don't have a right to worry about things on you once that he provides, right? Yeah. That's, That's what I believe. Okay, we'll do a couple more. Um, I'm learning that the more you speak about Jesus and his testimonies and stuff, things just start happening. Um, I kind of knew it, but I didn't really know it, if you know what I'm saying. Yes. And over Christmas break, that started happening like crazy. Start sharing testimonies, and I mean, just healings would start happening. People would start seeing in the Spirit, and it was, it was amazing. That's cool. And I also learned what the word ho means. What, the word what? Ho means? Ho. Why say ho? Ho? Ho. Because Steve Backton was here, you mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Ho! Yeah, oh, that's good. It's, uh, it's like the invitation to Christmas. Okay, a couple more. Oh, yes. I'm learning that I have to be myself and not hold back and rock in my royalty. And we may offend people, but if we hold back from who we are, then we're offending them even more. And um, just not, have, not be afraid of anyone and not have people around us that are afraid of us because they'll hold us back from being who we really are. That's awesome. Okay, yes. I'm learning that God is a passionate God, and a lot of people are deceived into thinking that he's not, and it's just a commitment, and that's a lie. <laughs> yes. And the more that you realize he's passionate about you, you become more passionate about him. You're kind of a hopeless romantic anyway, aren't you? Huh? A little. No? A little. <laughs> well, I saw you, like, writing romance novels and... You know, there ought to be some kingdom ones, you know, because there's, there's one in the Bible. You know the Song of Solomon? You ever read the Song of Solomon? We didn't let our kids read the Song of Solomon until they got married. You know the Song of Solomon almost didn't make it into the Bible, you know that? 
I would have been very sad. No Song of Solomon. I would have been discouraged. Anyway, okay. I, okay, one more. This is the last one. Um, I'm learning that God talks in a ton of different ways. Yes. And that the, the truly desperate are only going to hear everything that he has to say. That's good. That's a good word. I, I taught you that. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah that's sure good. Do. You're my favorite today. Cool. Yes. You're all my favorites some days. <laughs> let's, uh, let's just pray and ask Jesus to do whatever Jesus wants to do. Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing today. And we just bless your people. And Lord, we just ask that you would just touch them and that you would mess them up. And that your presence would be real and felt, displayed. Holy Spirit, Lord, we just pray for that. We just pray for you just to come. Everybody say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. No, I want you to mean it though. You just, you just were an echo. I want you to just say it again when you're ready. Come Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we just ask for you to come and do what you like to do. <laughs> Lord, we just release your Holy Spirit right now just to come and... <laughs> just fill us with your, your presence. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> that's 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 ho in a different language, I guess. Jesus, we love you. You know, um, one of the things that um, that we're learning is I really believe in times of prayer where you set aside a time to pray every day. And, um, of course, you know, the book of Acts, when they were going to the, uh, to the, when they healed the man at the gate, beautiful, it says they were at the, at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer, third hour, whatever it was. But, you know, obviously, the, it's good to have habits, good spiritual habits. I really believe in good spiritual habits, but, uh, I feel like one of the main things that we're l trying to learn <laughs> is uh, how to practice the Holy Spirit's presence wherever we go. And I was just writing um, a little bit of a little article on our school. I don't know if that <laughs> manifestation will work everywhere, but... One of the things that I think that makes our ministry school different than, um, than other schools is that we've um, intentionally not developed our ministry school to be like a, a monetaristic, like a, in a monastery. In other words, um, a lot of uh, schools, I was just thinking about this because I was just writing uh, yesterday, a lot of schools uh, have a... Uh, they have a dress code, and they they don't allow things like dating. They don't they they put people in dorms, and that's all good. It's all it's all what they're supposed to do. But one of the things that we felt we were supposed to do is just teach people how to practice the presence of God and to learn life with the Holy Spirit as you go. So you know that you've been encouraged. If you've been here very long, you know you've been encouraged to work. You know, work, it's a four-letter word to some people. But I think it's important that we learn how to take the Holy Spirit with us wherever we go. How many of you have any idea what I'm talking about besides? And several of you didn't raise your hands, and I'm not sure that you would 
know what I was talking about don't matter what I was talking about. Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. How many people still struggle with uh, manifestations? Struggle with when people have manifestations. You don't struggle with manifestations. You're in the middle of every mess I've seen around here. People struggle with you manifesting, but. Kind of like Peter when he asked Jesus, how many times do I have to forgive? Seven times? I'm like, dude, you're the one offending everybody. It's like I've never been in an accident, but I've caused hundreds of them. How many of you still struggle with Holy Spirit manifestation? Raise your hand, raise your hand. You struggle with them. Still struggle. Struggle means that... uh, doesn't mean that you don't have them, but it means that you struggle with people who do. Do you have that? How many have? Raise your hand. Let me talk to you. Cool. I can see that many of you are sensitive to that. Those people who are still trying to Good. Does somebody want to stand up and tell me what, what, what your struggle is? I'm being sincere. I'm, I'm not making fun of you. I know sometimes I joke around with you. If someone has the courage, yeah, go ahead. Shh, be quiet. Usually I don't have a struggle with that. The struggle I have is like, I'm trying to really hear something that's being said and I just can't hear it. Oh, yeah. I struggle when I can't hear myself when I'm talking. I'm the one talking. Yeah, yeah, that. And um, I think that sometimes there's a, well, there's a, there's a culture that says that if you're laughing when someone's speaking, that it's not, that it's, that's dishonoring. And um, I think that we're trying to figure out, like, how to do that in a way that doesn't feel dishonoring. When you're ADD, you just can't think when people are laughing, so. Would someone like to talk, to tell me what, what, well, what you struggle with, though? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm talking about, about manifestations. Someone talk to me. I'm not going to make fun of you. I want to hear what you... Go ahead. Stand up. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit 20 years ago. Yup. 20 years ago, before I knew holy laughter existed, and I wove around like a drunk for three or four hours, and it's never happened to me again, and I'm a little irritated that I'm not doing it, and it's just not hitting me. I mean, that's well, what I struggle with, not with everybody else doing it, but I don't. Well, we'll work that out. Okay. <laughs> I'd like someone to tell me what you really are struggling with, like with other people having manifestations. That's you, you're, that you're having a struggle? Okay, go ahead. Give me one. I've never experienced anything like I see here, ever. Yeah. And I cannot relate at all. In I, what way don't you relate? Well, sometimes I say, God, I, I'll do that, but I, I don't really want to jerk around. And, <laughs> <laughs> and look who the Lord set now. It's kind of shows me that he has a sense of humor. Have you ever tried to ditch her? Have you ever tried to ditch her? Like sit someplace else? I've never sat next to her. <laughs> <laughs> Just on the day that you're talking about manifestations. So it's a lack of experience, a lack of understanding what's really happening to them. It's, yeah. At first, it was really hard not to judge what I was seeing. Yeah. Because it was so different, out of my comfort zone. Totally. But is I it, really uh, just don't understand. Is it. your tr- uh, struggle theological or just experiential? Both. Both. Okay. Good. Good. Somebody else. That's honesty. I like it. Go ahead. Stand up right there. Honestly, um, I don't understand. Do 
Um, I, <clears throat> I know I get a new manifestation. I know this is crazy. When I see someone else have a manifestation, I think, oh, God, if I look like that, please. You know, like, one, I think that can't be you. And second of all, I never want that. You know, I love you, but don't ever make me look like that. And then I end up getting it. Like, I do this awful thing. <laughs> I judged Faith. I did in Sozo training, and she doesn't. <laughs> and I have it, <laughs> and I'll be at work. <laughs> and I work for Bill's sister, and I'll be like <laughs> snapping at her, and and she'll turn around. And she's like, what are you? I'm like, no, I'm not snapping at you. It's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and she's like the only person that understands on this planet. But like, you know, and and I. I God wants us to walk around drunk, and I'll be at work, and I'll be like, you know, I'll walk in Target, and Jackie will do something funny, and I'll be on the floor laughing hysterically, and I don't understand why God wants that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and no offense, but I don't want to do that, and I know that I've judged him, <laughs> and I'm going to get it. So, why? So, do you think that God <laughs> wants us to be, like, Spock-like? <laughs> no, I just... No, but why would he want us to, I mean, I'm causing a disruption with my laugh, but I, I used to judge people who did it, and now I'm Maybe doing it. being serious is causing a disruption in your life. I'm not a serious person. <laughs> I'm really not. Wouldn't it be funny to find out God's so happy that he's just like happy, drunk, happy all the time? But some people have like that tick thing, and then like, I don't, I don't, I don't want it, and I don't know why he wants us to have it. I told him if it makes me more spiritual, I'll. <laughs> you, you know, honestly, can I, can I be told, I know we're laughing, I love to laugh and, and stuff, but I honestly struggle with is that if a God of all the universe lives inside of people, why they don't have some kind of strange manifestation? <laughs> no, I mean, if God that made everything, things we haven't discovered in the zillions of billions of years, if he is actually, like, I know that when I come home, I affect my culture. I know when I come home, I, like, if I come home to Bethel, when I come home to, you know, it's like, if I'm gone for a couple of weeks at Bethel, they go, Oh, you know what? It's different when you're here. It's different when you're gone. And, and it seems to me that if God really lives inside of people, the struggle I have is that they're not different. I, I'm, I'm talking about intellectually. I'm, I'm not making a theological statement. I'm like, it seems odd to me that God could move in, like God, who has all power, created everything, could move inside of and not have a dynamic and dramatic manifestation. So, uh, so honestly, for me, for me, and, and uh, again, I'm not, I'm not making a biblical statement right now, I'm just making an observation. Like for me, when w I struggle more with the fact that some people are possessed by God and you can't tell. <laughs> I really have a struggle with, theolo now I'm talking theologically, how can you theologically think that God would habit, inhabit a person and there be no manifestation whatsoever? <laughs> to me, that seems really odd. And I, I'm not, I know once in a while I jerk or whatever, but I'm not a big man, I'm not, I don't get drunk and crawl around and do stuff. But I sure, like, it doesn't theologically bother me at all. I'm like, that seems normal, this Seems like not normal. It seems like if God is home, if God is home and takes over your body, that you would have some sort of manifestation that the God of all powers living in a human. That seems normal to me. I, I'm not making fun. I mean, I have the same struggles at, at times, but I'm like, my struggle is more on, you know, sometimes when people manifest, where they manifest, how they manifest, I'm like, crap that doesn't look good at all but the fact that people manifest seems very normal to me like it seems very normal that if the god of all the universe lives inside of somebody that it would be it would do something to you and and when i say manifest i'm not just necessarily talking about shaking but i mean it would make you like super smart 
or it make you like super strong like Samson or it would make you, I mean, it, it seems like if God is home, that there would be something super about your natural. It, 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 some, some people will crawl around, some people will get drunk, some people whatever, because that God has many manifestations of his presence. You know, Moses sees God and he doesn't, he doesn't laugh, but he glows. Solomon meets God and he doesn't glow, but he's smart. Daniel meets God, and he's not, he's, not, he's, he's not wise as much as he's intelligent, and he understands dreams and visions and stuff. All I'm getting at is that it, it doesn't bother me that some people manifest differently than other people, because I look around at creation, I go, there's different kinds of flowers, different kinds of stuff, and for everyone to have the same manifestation would seem a little weird to me. But, but the fact that some people have no manifestation whatsoever troubles me. I'm just being totally, like, frank. Like, it bothers me that some, I'm not talking about a shake or a fall down or what we call renewal manifestation. It doesn't bother me that certain people don't have those. But it bothers me that certain people have nothing. Like, there's nothing different when God moved into their house. And I'm just thinking, when I come home to my house or I come home to Bethel, my, the, the commentary on me being gone for a while and then coming back, and, and, or Bill or, or anybody, any of our team, is that, you know, it's so different when you're here. And I'm like, I'm a human, I'm just a person, but, but think about God living in a little tiny place like this. How could it not make a difference? And, and you, you, you talk about character choices, and that would be obvious, but I'm really talking about a difference. Because there are some people who can discipline themselves into good character choices. You know, there's, there's some people, I'm not one of them, but there's some people that have this amazing ability to like self-discipline. Like, without God, they could fast. They could do these crazy things. I, I, I admire them. It's, it's not in my personality to do that. But, um, but I mean make a difference in them. I mean, like something happens in them that didn't happen before they got the super, before the natural. And so my struggle is more like when, when you know, I have lots of pastor friends who... You know, they, when you say the word Bethel, somebody said, oh, you go to Bethel today. And, you know, they, they're, they're, they're friends of mine, and they're like, you know, that weird stuff that happens over there. And, you know, we have these discussions, and, you know, whatever they believe doesn't, doesn't hurt my relationship with them. But i like, how, how could you read the Bible and not believe in manifestations? I mean, the weirdest things happen in the Bible. Not always weird good, of course, but just weird. Right? I mean, there's some weird, bad stuff that the Bible talks about happen to people when they're demonized or whatever. But, I mean, there's, a, there's so many weird things that happen. I'll share this with you, but 127 times in the New Testament, angel, angels are mis- I mean, mentioned 127 times. 127 times. The uh, Holy Spirit's only mentioned 132. I mean, that tells you that the that the early church culture was very charged. It was very charged. And, and lots of times people will say, I saw an angel, whatever, and that's good, and I, and I, I totally believe in, you know, lots of my, most of my visions don't come like in with my eyes. Most of them I see them with my, my, my mind, which we talked a little bit about that. Um, so I have no problem that people saw an angel. But did you notice that most of the angels that are mentioned in the New Testament that they actually wrote about were, were angels that everyone saw. They opened gates. They took handcuffs off of people. They, you know, they did, they did stuff. And it wasn't like, did you see that angel? Oh, I didn't see it. You did, you know. Which is all good. You, you understand I'm not making fun of that dimension. But I'm saying, did you notice that the angels they wrote about broke into the visible empire and did stuff? I, I'm just getting at that, that, you know, our supernatural culture is pretty charged, but there's another, there, is, there is other places to go that we haven't even went yet. And if we're pretty messed up on the manifestations we have, man, wait till you see where we're going. So it's important for us to learn how to be offended at things we can't understand. And how many of you have things that your heart seems to understand that your head doesn't? 
Now that happens to me all the time. Like, uh, I, I, it kind of goes like this. Like, I'll see somebody do something, and my mind's all, what is that? What's going on? Somebody tell us like that. Where is that in the Bible? My, and my mind's going, whoa, 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 trying to find scriptures. Does your mind ever do that? I mean, I've been reading the Bible for years, so I just, I, I don't know that I think biblically, but I have a whole bunch of scripture in there. So when I see something, my mind tends to go, what? We're, you know, we're searching, we're searching. And if my mind can't find an exact scripture for it, it's not pleased. It's like, wake up, that doesn't look like it's in there. Way better, I nope, no information found, no information found. <laughs> How many of you have a clue what I'm talking about? And sometimes if my spirit's troubled over that, I'm like, oh, maybe that isn't the Lord. But sometimes my spirit's all, you know, mellow. It's all peace. It's like, mellow out. You, do you have that? Yeah. Did your spirit and your soul ever talk to each other? Yeah. You know, David said, I consult it with myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, triune being, let's have a triune meeting right now. <laughs> Body, what do you think? Ah, this all looks weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? It feels good. <laughs> we should do it. <laughs> Whatever, anyway, I've given you way too much transparency going on here. Somebody else, did someone else want to just kind of stand and tell me what your manifestation is? Yeah, right there. Yeah, you. Mm -hmm. What have you seen that's crazy? Oh, that seems normal to me now. I get it. You're right. Electrocution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. But like when everybody in the room turns around and stares at them and they're co totally distracted by it yeah. and they can't experience what the Holy Spirit's showing because they're so focused on what that person's doing. You think they can't? Well, they could, but it's really difficult. Uh, but yeah. so, I don't know. Yeah. It's just. Totally. What do you think you should do about that? Um, maybe have more focus, but like, <laughs> it's like the whole thing of, I mean, I don't want to judge them. Talk to the microphone. I don't want to judge them, and okay. I don't want to. Um, no, we're having an interaction. I don't think you're judging. Yeah. We're just talking about what the challenges that you're going through in this mm -hmm. culture. It's good. Yeah, but like just in my own like life, I, I don't want to judge them. And do I you have know. manifestations of, like that are kind of crazy like yeah. that? You yeah. do. And will you control them like you only do it in certain places? No, not necessarily. <laughs> well, like so, I like mean, you, someone else's. So you're someone else's problem. Also. But yeah. Um. So like. It's if, good. If it seems like. Oh, like. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just kind of confused by it, I guess. What are you confused sense. by? Well, I mean, in the sense of, like, I don't understand, like... You think life should be a lot more organized? <laughs> no, not necessarily that either. I don't know. I just, it's like... <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> trying well, to like, draw out I... of you what, what you're... Like, like, I guess part of it is, like, in American culture, we all sit in seats for hours to learn, right? Mm -hmm. This is, we don't even realize that this is not a kingdom thing. It's, a, it's an American cultural thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we sit in, in, in seats that are in nice rows. Somebody in front stands and talks to us. And, and we're, all, we're all orderly. And we think, okay, well, this is the kingdom. So then when someone flops her stuff, and we go, that's out of order. But it's possible that... Because uh, Jesus did and taught that this is out of order. And that's what God's doing. It is possible. That's all I'm getting at. Yeah, and I think the huge, or the main problem is, before I came here, I didn't really believe in manifestations at all. Like, I'd see the interns over there, like, freaking out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so distracting. That's so not God. And then I ended up being one of them. Yes. So, like... <laughs> But, like, not totally crazy. Like, I can still control it, like, in the sense. But um, a lot of times, like, when it's in a thing mm -hmm. like that, I can control it and, like, maintain. And so, like, I That's don't know. That's good. 
I don't know if it's just that I... So you have like an honorable manifestation. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am just teasing yeah. you a little bit. but It's good. Thank you for being honest. I like that. Someone else want to just share? Is there just one mic or... Go ahead. Um, I guess Are you guys all right just doing this a little bit? Yeah. Okay. I just, I started to teach and I opened the thing and I'm like, there's no one winning on this. I feel like we're supposed to do something else. So do this for a few minute, more minutes. I get really frustrated and discouraged. Um, like when I went home and like sometimes when I'm sitting and like things are happening and I try to think like... Like, I'll see manifestation, and like you were saying, like, my spirit is, like, totally okay with it, but then mm -hmm. I start thinking with, with the mind of, like, people who are at home, I'm like, how am I ever going to be able to explain this to people at home? Yeah. Like, I spent three months telling my boyfriend about the stuff that happened here, and he was like, okay. You still have a boyfriend? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and he came, and he got drunk, and then he, then we went back together, um, and he started talking about manifestations, and, like, people were like, but, but, and then I was trying to explain it, and I'm like, just don't tell people about it yeah. anymore because, like, and I don't know what to say to people when I get home. I found things that have happened to me have, like, had to do with, like, the manifestation of yeah. my spirit, and, but I can't tell people. And I get discouraged when I'm trying to talk to people because I'm like, amazing things happen, but I don't want to tell you what they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, some of it is that, you know, it's a little bit like, and this isn't, I don't mean this dishonorably, but sometimes it's like, Iron Man, what color blue is? Because when you explain, like, have you ever watched, I, I have to tell you that I honestly don't typically like Christian TV. Because, the, uh, because TV uh, is just intuitively is entertainment. And when you, and, and typically is fiction. So have you ever seen a really uh, awesome service on watching it on TV? There's something about not being there and watching it from a distance that feels a little bit like Michael watching David dance. It doesn't feel real. But when you're there, it's totally different. It's almost like the things of, many of the things of God need to be experienced. Um, like they're designed to be experienced and not defined. Do you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, it's like, I don't have any problem like someone talking to somebody who doesn't believe in manifestation about manifestations, but I'm never really convinced them without them actually experiencing it. I had an issue just like talking to my youth pastor about tongues because he had just like talked to the youth group, I guess, when I spoke to him about... Put your how, mic just a little closer. Sorry, That's right. About how he like sees... Like he, when he talked to them about tongues, he like only verified like foreign language... Mm -hmm. it's like actual languages and so he was like I don't know he was arguing with me about that for a while I'm like I don't know you just have to do it like what kind of a church do you go would you I, I go to the, a Christian Missionary Alliance church uh huh CMA mm -hmm. and those are all over the map as far as what they believe mm -hmm. about the gifts because like between my youth pastor and my head pastor there was like my head pastor's like well I'm open to it and my youth pastor's like well I don't really know so yeah yeah, and some CMA churches are very charismatic. Like we have a church in town here called Risen King. Everyone ever been there? Pastor and I are really close friends. And their church is very, especially for cut, cutting edge for CMA especially. Like they totally believe in the gifts. They pray for the sick. They cast out demons, all that stuff. And then some churches are, CMA churches are very, almost like Baptist charismatic. They're all over the map. That's good. Well, yeah, if they're, if, they, if they're struggling with, you know, speaking in tongues, probably going to struggle with pretty much everything that happens here. <laughs> you know, that's good. It's, it's good that you're pushing through. Do you know that you're going to be a great preacher? No, stand up for just a minute. I just had something I wanted to tell you. I don't know if it'll be very long, but just when you stood up, I, I just, I heard the word profound teacher and preacher. And I saw... Um, I'm, I saw you standing in a stadium, and there was all these people, and you were and you were preaching, and it was like you were very passionately preaching, and uh, and uh, like Joyce Myers though. Do you know who Joyce Myers is? There's a revelatory thing on you, but there's also an encouraging. Like you're like a, like a Barnabas, like you're an encourager, but you also are deep. Like you're not just flowery; you're deep and. 
Have you ever had any desire to preach? Oh, that's good. I got, like, the Lord showed me, sorry, the Lord showed me a vision of me with my sisters. Yeah. Um, preaching, which was really profound because I've always been, like, the more, like, spiritual. Yeah. Because when I talk to my sister now, she is, like, completely accepting that happened here without yeah. ever having come here mm -hmm. or anything just like the lord's working in her and stuff and my other sister isn't even a believer yet but like he showed that to me and that we were gonna do stuff like that so i've been well, the lord put you in a bubble like i saw you in this bubble and uh even it's even a. there's even a i don't know how to explain this but i saw you in a bubble and your boyfriend was trying to come through the bubble it wasn't a purity thing i don't i wouldn't do that publicly <laughs> It's like the Lord has, uh, the Lord has put this uh, bubble around you. It's almost like it's a time of intimacy with Him, and He's kind of like blocked everyone else out. Does this make sense? And uh, I saw your boyfriend kind of like trying to get into that bubble, like relationally connect deeper. And for some reason, it's just like a season, Lord. The Lord is jealous over your uh, full attention, and um, you know I don't mean anything wrong. I would not do that publicly if I had something to say to you I, I can see the, your purity but this is, a, this is like the Lord is jealous over this season in your life and so it, it might feel like he's on the outside looking in and it's alright because the Lord will lift that and, and the, the season will change in seven more months it'll change and he'll lift that and you'll make a connect again so don't worry about that alright cool <laughs> Everybody wants a prophecy now. Sorry. You're way in the back, though. You have long, kind of red hair. I just wanted your opinion. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> On uh, the control thing, what, the only struggle I have, um, I have been drunk once and would like it again. And it only came after something else came out, if that makes sense. Um, and, um, um, do you want to be more specific about that? Oh, after like a bad manifestation, then came the You mean the good like you got delivered from something? Yes. Uh-huh. It was amazing. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so I'd like to be drunk again. Um, all that to say, sometimes it's strange to me that you can be gyrating and then all of a sudden stop. Did God just turn off in you? Or is it like what she was saying, like an honor thing? Like they just know the time, like when to stop it? Because like mm -hmm. the thing that got me thinking about mm -hmm. um, manifestations was like if you're driving in a car and your hand's out the window, like, you know, when you do that thing, you're driving, yeah, yeah, yeah. like you can stop it. You can that's resist the wind, but if you barely yield, mm -hmm. you're in it. And that's like what got me like, okay, like that's so real. Like totally. I can totally translate that. Like put your hand in the wind, it'll take over. But there is a part of you mm -hmm. that I think has to yield, like a yes. Mm -hmm. And so I did that and I'm totally open to it. But, um, but I can hold my hand out stiff and control it. So totally. I'm just going to ask you, can you control manifestations? And if you can, is that God? And I think there's a simple, uh, I think there's not... I think there's a simple answer, but I think it's like multifaceted. And the first one is what you just said is amazing. Example, of, I would have put it differently. But scripturally, let's talk about what scripture says first. It says, it says the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. And that's, and that's in the context of prophetic manifestations. And what is he talking about there? He's talking about people who, remember he said, let, one, let two or three of you prophesy and let the others pass judgment. Somebody comes in. And so he's talking about people who are manifesting the spirit, right? And, and of course, their, their argument would be, you don't hear their argument on the other side. So you, you kind of have to imagine the argument that they're having. And he's saying, and they must be saying, a Holy Spirit made me do this. And he's saying to them, no, listen, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So he's saying, the Holy Spirit doesn't possess you like a demon, but he, asked, he, he comes with permissional authority. So the, so the answer, the, the, the large general answer is that you're absolutely right that if you resist the Holy Spirit, you can shut that manifestation right down. Secondly, it says that the, the way that Paul says that, it's almost like 
He's saying to you, you, when you have this gift flowing through, around, or to you, that you're actually responsible to steward it. Which makes sense because Ephesians 3 says, Paul said, I am a steward of the manifold grace of God. So he says, okay, God gives me this. And he goes, okay, Paul, I want you to use the, my wisdom to steward my gift. Which makes sense. But I, I, I do want to speak to the exception too. I have seen a few times... And how many of you know that all scripture is held in tension? Every time you say, God always does it this way, those of us have been around for a little while, you will almost always find an exception somewhere, just enough to screw with your theology. <laughs> so I will say this, that I have, at times, as an exception, everyone say the word, word exception, I have at times, see, as an exception, um, uh, a manifestation on somebody that they as the Holy Spirit, they absolutely could not control. I have seen that. I struggle when it's the same person every time. You with me? It's kind of like, I, I don't really believe in, I don't believe in judgmental words. I don't really believe, I don't really believe that the Holy Spirit's purpose in prophecy is correction, mostly. But I have no problem if it's an exception in your life. Like, you know, if Nancy comes in and corrects me with a prophetic word, I really listen because I know that that is not her core value to do that. But when people are walking around feeling like they're God's correction for the world, doesn't do anything for me. Are you with me? So I think that when the Holy Spirit decides that he is going to exercise his lordship and take somebody over, which is, is rare, it may not be rare in a you know, 400 people that we have here. But it would be rare in a person's life, right? Mark might experience that two or three times in his whole life, you know, if he lives to be 100. You know, it's not gonna, he's not gonna experience it every Sunday or every time he gets together. Are you, are you, are, am I explaining myself well? But as an exception in his life, I can accept that that experience is real in his life and is the Holy Spirit. The struggle that I have that you, you may have, and as you get older you will have, is in this culture, oftentimes it's the same people who, can, who always feel possessed by the Spirit. And I'm like, no, that wouldn't be true. It is your either need for attention, and, and let me say this, oftentimes our needs that are driving our manifestations are not conscious. You know, what most people, like let's just talk, take little children. I have one of my grandchildren who just has an incredible need for attention. It's part of the way, I don't want to even give it away who, it's part of the way they're wired. But it's also part of an insecurity in them. And so when one of my grandchildren, I, I'll say Isaac, my middle, daughter, my middle daughter's son, gets in, uh, in, when he gets insecure, he gets really quiet and he'll go off in the corner and be by himself. But when my other grandchild gets insecure, they're very loud and does anything for attention. I am sure that at this age, they have no clue that, they're, that they feel insecure and are manifesting that out of their insecurity. There are adults who never do figure it out. I, I'm, not being, I'm just saying, they don't have enough feedback in their life for them. When I'm insecure, I behave like this. And so when they come to Christian them and they receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right, that they're supposed to manage... When they need attention, or they feel insecure, or they feel scared, oftentimes they will stir something up that's inappropriate. In a, in, it's in the wrong season. Not realizing what's actually driving the manifestation, although it may be spirit-inspired, in, spirit it's actually soul, soulishly being led. Does that make sense? And, and I mean, some people... And, and there's, a, there's a large group of people who are innocent in that they are unaware that they're doing that. Like, like you know, they're, they're like, they're not doing it out of evil heart. Like, where that when they get in these situations, they behave like this, and they've brought that whole context into their Christian them. And that's why we need each other. That's why we need feedback. That's why we need accountability. That's why we need discipleship, right? It, it isn't to shut down the Holy Spirit. It's to like, do you realize that in this situation, you get attention like this when you're insecure, and when you're in this environment, you get attention like this when you're insecure, and so on and so forth. Do you realize insecurity, which is what? Fear? Do you realize fear is actually 
life. And these are the... Are you following me? So, oftentimes people are... Man- oh, oftentimes is not... Sometimes people are manifesting, but the manifestation is not... So, it's not that it isn't the Holy Spirit, but the way that they're stewarding the Holy Spirit's manifestations in their life sometimes is a commentary on other struggles in their soul that they haven't dealt with. I can tell you this. This is a, a, maybe a really good insight for some of you that are just coming new into this. In the early days of the renewal, how many of you were in the early days of the renewal? Would you raise your hands? Okay, good. That means a whole bunch of you aren't, haven't been. This, is, this would be good information for you. In the early days of the re- renewal, what happened was is, um, is that uh, because the manifestations, that because some of the manifestations were so new, we would bring people up and we would like tell Johnny, tell him what happened in your life, and they would be like, well, and then, and they'd fall down, and we go, oh, how wonderful. And what what ended up happening is is that the fathers validated that having those manifestations was spiritual. Now, what happens when people need father's attention? <laughs> What happens is that when people need attention and they realize that this is what fathers, it's like, you know what? Father loves football. Guess what son, when they want their father's attention, they fall in love with football and so on and so forth. So sometimes the manifestations, even though they were real, they were being driven out of a need. Some, I don't know if I, I know I'm making, I know I'm making some sense, but they were be, they were, the, the manifestation was totally healthy, but the, the way the manifestation was driven, the undercore reason why the manifestation was happening at that moment in that person was unhealthy. Does that make sense? Okay, a couple more. We still have some time. Wherever the mic is. Okay, why don't you stand up, Matthew? Matthew, you, yeah, you, you know what? Um, have you ever read the book of Daniel? It's going to become your favorite book. Because you're like Daniel with the Bible. And there's a, uh, there's, a, there's a verse in the Bible. Just keep your thought for a minute because I'm going to let you talk. It says this. Uh, I just want to make sure I get it right. Yeah, listen to this. In verse 17 of Daniel 1, it says, uh, As for these four youths, uh, Daniel, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, God gave them knowledge and intelligence. In every branch of, listen to this. How, listen, th- do you like this? Yes. It's, God gave them knowledge and intelligence in every branch of literature. And then he separates Daniel. And he said, and, uh, uh, literature and wisdom. And Daniel even understood visions and dreams. I, I like that. Did you see the dimensions of God's manifestation in, in their lives? In the four of them, they all had knowledge and intelligence in, in, uh, in literature and literature right there has a little, what does it mean? It, oh, it actually means in writing. The word literature there, but it writing and wisdom. And Daniel had another thing. He had the ability to dreams on top of the literature and um, uh, intelligence. And so that's you. So the Lord's given you, let me, get, let me make sure you understand. He's given you intelligence for literature and wisdom and he's going to give you the ability to understand visions and dreams. All right? Okay, go ahead. What, what were you going to say? God spoke to me through Daniel 117 last night, actually. Daniel 117? Exact scripture I just gave you. I know. <laughs> God's on. <laughs> now, is Mandy, are you guys related? She's my fiance. She's your fiance? We came engaged. Thank you very you much. You came engaged? <laughs> She's very beautiful, huh? Yeah. She looks good in yellow, too. Yeah, she looks good in yellow. Oh, yeah, I said that to you already. In yellow. And you're a little prophetess, huh? That's yeah, what she you're is. doing. Here. Keep That's going. what you're doing here, huh? You were, you're like one of the daughters of the prophets who came and equipped and, and fly, huh? And you're about to marry like Dan. Like. <laughs> 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 
And then you're going to have three little children, Shadmack, Meshach, and Meshach, and go. Actually, I wouldn't name them that if I were you. It's going to be like a private name, you know? Because they're going to have boldness to change governments. Oh, you think I'm kidding, huh? No. Okay. All of her words include children, prophecies prophecy about her children, too. Yeah? Uh -huh. That's good. Because when you get married, you know, you can have children. <laughs> I just clarifying that for some of you didn't understand that's like that happens after you have get married. Sometimes it gets mixed up sometimes. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> I want you to know that I'm serious about what I'm saying. Okay. But sometimes the way I talk is ridiculous. Um, so just prefacing that for everyone. I'm not being disrespectful. Okay, put that closer to your mic. You okay. won't be so ridiculous. Right. Okay. Um, not that I mean to do this or not that I even think this is right, but emotionally this is my response to manifestations. Okay. I, I feel like I do have in my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm very analytical in my mind. But so I, all right. My manifestations of God's presence, like, are not visible. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, if somebody does this, it's like, oh, man, Holy Spirit, like, manifest your level one, you know? Or, like, someone does, like, the whole arm, then that's like, oh, man, they're like, Holy Spirit, level three. And then, like, if you're flapping, man, you're in the zone, you know? And it's like, everybody can see And your point is? Huh? Your point is? Well, like... My point is that I'm not offended in my mind because it really doesn't bother me. But emotionally, like sometimes I'm not a level one, but I feel like everyone can. can and then you, you so three months ago, you talked about how sometimes you instinctively look at yourself like the way you think other people look at you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Totally. So if I'm like, I'm doing this, mm, or like if I'm just crying, or like, even like bawling and squalling, but under my chair, you know, like I'm. You're a level thinking one. everyone's thinking you're a level yeah, and one, it's, and it's like it's when stupid. really you're a five. Thank you. Yeah, and your word like bumped me up. You know what I'm saying? Totally. In front of everyone, but like anyway, my emotional reaction is out of line, but it still happens, and that's like what happens to me when I'm next to like a level five or a level ten. You know, like the fish <laughs> is like level ten. <laughs> that's good. So what would you say to people who, who think that there's a scale? Get someone to prophesy that they're a Daniel and then they won't be jealous of no matter how they're. <laughs> I would say that people who, who try to spiritually appraise th things through, their, through what they can see with their natural man are very foolish. Whether they grade them high or low. Discernment through the, through the, remember, okay, here we go. Saul, Samuel goes to, to uh, David's house to find a king, and he's, he's going to choose the oldest because he's the biggest in the da-da-da, and God goes no, and then da-da-da-da, and then finally God corrects him, and he goes, do not look as man looks, but look with the eyes of God, right? So no one would ever pick Daniel, I mean David, no one would ever pick David as, how many of you know it's pretty bad when your father doesn't invite you to a dinner that the president's at? Yeah. I mean, you come from a very poor family. Think about it. You come from a very poor family and President Bush comes to your house and your dad doesn't even let you come out of the field to come to dinner. Doesn't say a lot for the, how much hope your dad has in you. You know, Samuel's like the president, right? He's like the president of Israel. He's they're ruled by judges. He's, he's the head guy. He comes to a very poor family. Jesse's a very poor family. And, and, and he doesn't even invite his youngest son. So what I'm getting at is like, you know what? If you, if you evaluate, if you spiritually appraise things with your eyes, you will be fooled way more than 50% of the time. So I try to not discern how somebody's doing with my eyes. I mean, sometimes they look like they're doing awesome, and I just explained to you that they're really doing insecure. And sometimes they look like nothing's happening, and I'll go, what's going on in your life? And they have this incredible thing going on in their life. And I'm like, I've learned, I've learned enough, I've been around enough to know that these things don't always tell the truth. Thanks. Yep. Somebody else. Hey. Oh, where right. are you? 
three o'clock. Hey. hey, how are you? Hey, good. How are you? Good. Do I look good in brown? Uh, you look good in any color. Thanks, man. Hey, do you know what brown? Thanks. That was really good. Uh huh. Do you, you know, know what brown, brown means? Is? Yeah, because I get a lot of brown. Like this is a gift. I keep getting brown stuff from everybody. So mm, humble. What's God saying? Says that you're walking in humility. That's cool. That's why you have a head covering. I'll take that. <laughs> That's good. That's good stuff. Well, you kind of answered it with the last two questions, um, but I just want to, like, get more. Okay. How do you handle that? If you... Put like, your mic just a little closer. If you feel like, like someone is, you know, drawing that attention for the wrong reason or something, really? and you see it, or if you're around people that, that do that quite a bit and you really yeah. feel that's on them, how do you handle it? Because, like, one of my personal battles is to stop being judgmental and critical. Totally. So that's hard, and that's a big area, you know what I mean, to... How do you handle that? When so the way that? that you would probably handle it because of the battle that you just explained inside of you is you would learn how to be gracious to people who you believe are, are not manifesting the spirit. Mm -hmm. So in other words, your, your, your challenge and your test is different than someone else's test. Your test is how do I live with people who aren't acting perfectly <laughs> from my perspective? How do I give people grace to be even though I don't agree? You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. And so I would say that you handle it by not handling it. Like you handle it by not, not requiring them to change to meet your standards, but loving them as they are. Yeah. I, would say that, I would say that in your situation, that's what you're learning. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in leadership of a team and those things are happening as you grow, the lesson will be different. But you won't get to do that lesson until you get this one accomplished in your life and I know it well because you know that's 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 where I came from so I yeah. I know that I'd like to go in and fix something in God's all you know you think that you need they need fixed but actually I made them manifest so I could fix you because yeah. how many know trials never cause you problems always reveal the ones you have wow. do you know that your trial does not didn't give you the problem it revealed the one that was always there it pushed it to the surface right you know, you get somebody and they're rude to you and you get mad at them. Guess what? Mad was there. Right? Or, you know, I got in a situation when they made me lie. No, lie was there. It just took enough pressure to push it to the surface, right? So, so I, I wouldn't doubt that the Lord puts those people in your life so that he can continue to drive that there until there is nothing to drive to the surface. And you become a merciful, compassionate person who have the eyes of God who, who, who release grace to people who maybe don't deserve it, then the Lord begins to give you discernment about what to do for people who still need. Does that make sense? I, I want to say this. This wouldn't be about you. It would be about us. Discernment and suspicion are kissing cousins. Huh. They become intimate with each other. How, did you get that? Discernment and suspicion. Like suspicion is driven by jealousy but it's discernment on jealous on, on, on the wrong character values. Same gift driven by the wrong spirit. You know what I just said right there is really profound. For everybody that has a, a high level of discernment, I guarantee you, if you're a very strong discernment, like I grew up, you know, uh, discernment typically grows in people who, um, who grow up in really, um, really harsh environments. Like discernment is the way I survived. Like I had to come in and learn how to discern what's driving my dad because it was life or death. So if I got around him and I could feel something violent on him, it just disappeared, sometimes for days, right? The struggle is, is that that gift, that the Holy Spirit gift on discern, uh, of discernment, when it gets driven by insecurity and jealousy, it becomes suspicion. And suspicion attracts demonic spirits. I don't know if you got all that, but. So be careful because those of you that have a high level of discernment, it, it can easily get misused in your life if you got some of that. Remember I was talking about the insecure stuff, how people manifest? Well, some people who, that have, have spiritual gifts manifest spiritual gifts out of insecurity. And guess what? It's the wrong core value driving them and the information they get is inaccurate. Did you get all that? Okay. You know, I just had this uh, scenario. It's kind of like this. If, um, if, two, if one guy 
uh, if two girls like one guy, it's amazing how the case that the girls can build against each other. Yeah. I don't know why I have that scenario. I just saw it and why went on. It's amazing how they can, the cases they can build against each other. This is a great example of what I'm saying. It's like suddenly they see each other and they know everything that's wrong with each other. What's the real problem? Jealousy. What happens when the boss, you work at some place and the boss really keeps giving one person compliments? It's amazing how your discernment kicks in. <laughs> and it begins to tell you all the things that's wrong with the person who's getting the compliments. What's the real problem? Insecurity and jealousy. Are you with me? This is really practical, but this, this is, your, is your gift on insecurity, on jealousy. And be careful, because the bigger the gift, the more struggle you will have when it gets the wrong feel. Yeah. <laughs> People that don't have very developed gifts, they also aren't super discerning, and therefore they're not super suspicious, when their gift does get on the wrong spirit. But when you develop a big old gift and you put it with the wrong spirit, I guarantee you, you're being tormented by all the things you see on the person who the boss likes. Or the pastor likes. Or Pastor Chris seems to favor. And I want to tell you, you're all my favorites. Different days. Let's see, am I supposed to be done a few more minutes? Okay, great. I got a few more minutes, right? Somebody else? Yes. Um, if Jesus is supposed to be our model, yes. like I have, like I want to know why there aren't examples of him manifesting the Holy Spirit in like the ways that I see or the way that I even feel like I sometimes do. Like, there's What nothing. do you think the answer to that question is? Well, I know he manifested the Holy Spirit, but is it like a renewal thing? Is it like a new thing now? What do you think the answer to that question is? I don't, I really don't know. Because it's amazing when they came to arrest him, right? And who do you seek? And the original Greek language says they all fell down. We would call it slain in the spirit. But we don't ever see Jesus personally slain in the spirit. But we see them slain in the spirit. I, I, this is just an idea. I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. But I will say this, that Jesus lived the eons of ages in the spirit realm. And so you, I think that oftentimes manifestations happen because the body cannot take the power of the spirit. And Jesus had a long time to deal with that. Like forever. <laughs> so I don't know if that's the answer, honestly. It's a great question. But we know that, that people that Jesus touched had those kind of manifestations. I don't know about flopping and dropping, you know, or whatever. Do you, do you know that if you church history, that many, um, every single revival had uh, odd manifestations like that? Do you know, like, do you know, John Wesley, he would preach, and they would say, do not, do not, uh, you, they would not allow people to be in trees while he preached. Do you remember this? Because while he's preaching, people would get slain in the spirit and fall out of trees. Now, that, that revival was not marked. It wasn't marked. It wasn't known for manifestations. It was actually known for their, their great preaching but, and for the Reformation, the things they were learning, right? But the fact is, if you, if you read their journals, it was like they personally shook. They personally had the same kind of manifestations. And nobody was, they didn't go to Toronto. There wasn't the internet, so they weren't telling each other. They were writing them in books, and they didn't know other people were having those manifestations. The, the same thing with Wales. In Wales, you know, with, uh, come on, help me. Evan Roberts, yeah, same thing. If you read Evan Roberts' journals, the same, same deal. You know, people were flopping. They were having manifestations. They were crawling around. They were laughing. Lots of laughter in that one. And, and um, so uh, even, though the, even though that the revivals weren't marked with that, like Toronto Blessing, everyone comes to laugh, that was a lot of the manifestations were those kind of manifestations. So it is interesting, isn't it? It's a great question, though. Uh, I don't know why Jesus didn't. My mind's going, let's scan the Gospels. Uh, no references. So, you know, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. I do know that he had manifestations I've never seen. 
Like people are trying to kill him and he disappears. I've wanted to do that many times. I've preached messages where like, beam me up right now would be excellent. You know what I mean? Um, and so, you know, he, he did have manifestations that I've never seen before. As I've seen, I, I don't know that he had, so I don't know. Um, we have, oh, I'm, I'm supposed to be done, right? Yes. Okay. Bless you. I love you. Okay. So we just, we only have a few minutes because um, Kelly's coming in uh, to teach you guys. Um, excuse me. Um, I am okay. Thank you, though, for the concern. I am. I'm good. We're all. So, a few things. Uh, let's see. I might pick people tonight. I haven't done that in a while. Let's see. Maylin, what did you get out of the DVD? Um, in manifestations, I think I know the answer, but should there be something that's transformed in us that maybe there's a breaking away of a bondage or a revelation to something, or is it, can it be just mindless? Sorry, I was calling Paul yesterday asking if you could turn up the lights so the Asking, in a manifestation, is it something that you turn your brain off? <clears throat> uh-huh. Sure, great question. Yeah, um, I'll answer this, and then if uh, Dr. Bob has anything, or Scott or Dave, um, for sure, there's definitely... Um, I have, ex in my, like, I've experienced different, there's different ones. Let me just say that first. So sometimes, like, people, uh, like, okay, manifestations don't always just look like fish flopping on the floor. Sometimes it's people cannot stop crying. Um, and for, and for, you have no example. One time I was at a conference crying. No concept as to why I'm crying. But I know that if I'm doing something and I probably, and I don't really have any idea why it's happening, it's probably just the Holy Spirit trying to um, healing or dealing with something like that. Sometimes you'll know and sometimes you won't. Um, Debbie, that, that night that you were like way drunk in the spirit, do you remember a lot of it? Do you remember pieces of it? Debbie, because if you didn't see her that one night, she was like incoherent to the max. Um, so maybe you can just, maybe you can share your experience and then I'll finish. Uh, so it was, so it was, um, the last time that Bill Van there, and I will just be honest, I was, before that, like, I was very okay with, like, the crying and, like, the jerk it or whatever, but I have since been transformed by the renewing of my mind, so I, I'm sorry, but I, before that, I felt very, like, uh, the Bible says to stay away from the appearance of sin, so when people are saying they get drunk and stoned in the Holy Ghost, like, that's not right, blah, 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 blah. So as far as like shutting off your mind thing, I think that sometimes it is something you have to shut your mind off to. And sometimes it's just not because Holy Spirit is going to do what Holy Spirit wants to do. But I, I mean, I was drunk. Like I have been drunk in the natural and I have, I've like as drunk as I have been in the natural, I've never been that drunk as I was in the spirit and like some of it I remember and some of it I didn't like Alden and Kelly were telling me things the next morning. Um, <laughs> and uh, does that does that answer what you? Yeah, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to share a little bit of what your experience was because you were so, you were so incoherent in that sense. Um, hang on one second. Yeah, I'm going to. Well, I'm going to answer the fullness of that, too. So sometimes you know what's being healed or what's being broken off. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes um, it's a manifestation that is, that is. Um, agree with Chris in that um, I think the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. I've experienced it where um, most of the time, I think if you shut yourself off to the Holy Spirit, if you reject it, then you can quench it. Um, but there are, there are times, like he was saying, 
where it is something that just it takes over and there's nothing you can there's nothing you can do about it. You can't stop, you can't change it. Because I've also experienced laughing. Um, and very, very similarly, um, when you can't stop laughing, again, it's the same thing. Holy Spirit's doing something in you. Sometimes you know what he's breaking off and sometimes you don't. Um, but definitely, I always think that when you're having a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, my personal feeling is that something is taking place for, for some reason. And sometimes it's just so that you'll, um, it's taking you out of yourself. Does that make sense? Like just joy um, or things like that. Does that answer that Kind of what you're saying? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And I think, so, like, exactly what you're saying. Like, I think sometimes we know, like, oh, he's setting me free from this thing. And then sometimes it's just, like, I am crying. I have no idea I'm crying. and But I know he's, I know he's moving, you know, in something. Well, I think they're talking about physical manifestations of the spirit where your body is twitching, crying, laughing, laying on the floor. He was saying like fish flopping, um, dr being extremely drunk, um, twitching. I don't know if I already said that one. Um, so I think they're talking about that kind of stuff in as far as manifestations go. Yeah. So that night, like, I, one of the things that I do remember is that I kept saying, like, this is not me. Like, this is not who I am. Like, this is not me. She actually said, um, it, she said something to the effect, I don't remember her exact words, but something to the effect of, like, you didn't know that, like, this was in you or that you could be this way. And so sometimes I do think it's a revealing of something that you didn't know before. And sometimes I think that, like, what you already said. Um, God is amazingly extravagant. If you look at all of creation, he's amazingly extravagant. I mean, we all, there's none of us that are alike, okay? But he's also never, this is Adam's wishing me a happy Monday on my hay towel. It's demonic. It's seriously, it is, it's possessed. It needs deliverance. Is what is what it needs. <laughs> there, thank you, Adam. All right. So, with the fact that God is extravagant, then we know that everything and anything is possible. Manifestations, you will never. I'm just telling you straight up. You'll never be able to define all manifestations. You, however, can experience anything in manifestations. So, with God being, um, this is fairly new revelation to me. Um, um, really new. Um, but, but with God being as extravagant as he is, I want to just answer, because God will never waste a manifestation without producing something. So, so you can count on it that if there's a manifestation coming, right, if there's a manifestation coming and he's had anything to do with it, something's going on. You may not see it for 10 years, but you'll, go, you'll look back and you, that, that moment will be able to be defined in time with what happened then. But don't get hung up Oh, why did I do that? That was so embarrassing. Was a da, da, da. And, the, and the thing is, that manifestation may never happen again because if you look through Scripture, God never heals somebody the same way. Twice. It, he, because otherwise, anytime you do something twice, it has a tendency to become religious. And, so, and he has a personal relationship with us. And when personal relationships move into routine, they become stagnant. And his mercies and his grace and his, all everything's new. Everything's always, all his truth is always new. So I just want to just be free to be free. He really, I mean, Dad, Dad loves us just being, being free. And we can get hung up on, but see, when you start defining, when I start defining for Ariel how she can actually manifest joy, I've limited her, and God never limits us. Jesus as our source, God is our source. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens him, us, and without him we can do nothing. So does that, I just want to just make sure that there's never anything ever wasted. You know, uh, I, the only thing that ever stops us literally from manifestations probably yeah. is pride. As Pastor Scott said, God doesn't want anything 
that he does in us and through us. But there are times when some of the things that he does in us and through us are wasted because of our reaction. Um, case in point, we had a, a lady in our congregation a number of years ago who <clears throat> uh, was very sensitive to the voice of the Lord and prophesied quite often. Um, the only problem was that as she prophesied, she cried. And she cried to the point where nobody could understand what the prophecy was. And so after three or four times of this happening, we sat her down and reminded her that the spirit of the, pro the, yeah, the, spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. And she said, I can't help it. When I'm in the presence of the Lord, I cry. I said, if the Lord wants his message to get across, you should be able to speak in a voice that everybody will understand. Nobody understands what you say. She got offended and left the church. So be careful. Yes, the, the presence of God may, may cause you to cry, whether it's crying or laughing or whatever, but if in the process of the crying or laughing, what he really wants to get across to somebody uh, is lost, then it's not, it's not God. It's wasted, but it's wasted by us. Um, and just going to in another little direction here, uh, speaking from the conservative side, <laughs> um, God very often will use manifestations of various kinds in our lives, whether it's laughing or crying or whether it's uh, falling out under the power of the Spirit, uh, that type of thing. Uh, sometimes it's just a reminder. Hey, I'm in charge. And uh, sometimes it's for the purpose, like, like Alden said, of God doing something in us. Sometimes it's, it's trying to remind us that, hey, I'm in charge, not you. And sometimes it's to help us break out of our traditional bondages and baggage. As, as Chris said in the CD, if, if the power of God and God himself dwells in us, then why aren't we manifesting something? Okay, And if we aren't, we need to check and find out what's wrong with me. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's why I just, you know, I was saying like to quen you know, can you can you quench that if you resist? And Chris was saying this too. You know, I think I believe that you I think you can 90% of the time. Like he was saying, there's those rare things um or I shouldn't say rare. There's those lesser times when, you know, like Heidi Baker had, you know, her most like I mean the one that's most notable. I mean, she had people who had to physically carry her around so she could get changed and go to the bathroom you know that wasn't her just trying to make people do things for her um that was a, she was under holy spirit um and so obviously that was an intense one where um you know she she needed the assistance of other people because she was so out in the spirit um so Right. 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 Right, right. Yeah. Right. Right. yourself if you're sensitive to that I mean you know Right. 
Yeah. 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 And Chris was saying too, like about insecure, like the insecurity when that is like happening um, in people and they're manifesting and really it's not, it's coming from a place of insecurity. Sometimes they don't even know that that's happening. So I think like Pastor Scott is saying is, you know, if you, if you just, um, if you are uh, surrendered to Holy Spirit and what he's doing, um, that's, that's the better way to than, you know, um, than being afraid all the time that you're moving out of a wrong spirit, you know. Um, and that's why we have community and accountability and just um, being, you know, uh, being there for one another so that, you know, if something is, if we do notice, you know, something we're like, we can, we can help on the side, like help in private. Does that make sense? You know, instead of dealing with it publicly or, you know, you know just like Dr. Bob was saying, after they noticed a certain situation a couple times, they dealt with it privately. So it's not, it's never something like, Hey, we're going to tell you in the middle of the meeting, you need to stop right now because you're being psycho, you know, kind of a thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Yep. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, good questions, good observations, um, and as always, if there's other things that th that come up as you're processing through, please talk to one of us. We do have to break, though, because Kelly has to come in. Um, so just take five minutes, um, 18 after, and then um, Kelly will be in to teach you. So use the restroom, do crazy things, buy a snack in the earth and fire room. Sean just restocked the snacks, so if you're snacky, you can go buy a snack. Dun, dun, dun. I will miss you all. Enjoy Kelly.
Guess what I get to do? Uh, nah, I think we're already prayed in. I get to introduce a daughter. You know, every now and then in this life, you're going to learn that you run across very unique people. And, and, and really what you're coming across is, is, is really greatness. And, and you watch greatness and it's developing. And you watch, um, you, watch you, you get a chance and a, and a joy to say, I actually get to know this person. I don't know if there's anybody in this body right now that hasn't been touched at some point, at some level, by uh, the speaker tonight. And um, every night, you know, it's it's pretty cool when you get to have a chance to um, introduce um, really greatness. Um, this 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 woman of God is a John seventeen uh, woman of God, um, and you know, Kel. Um, it's remarkable, um, really, um, the amount of influence. I, I, how long you been here in this area? Two and a half years. Um, I'm not sure I know too many other people that have touched as many people you have in a two and a half year period of time at the depth that, that you've touched them. And so um, it, it's great pleasure to introduce you. And um, I want to, I, I, can we stand up and just... Praise God and thank God for the woman, the God woman, that gets a chance to uh, speak to you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I've cried all the tears I'm willing to cry today. Yeah. <laughs> I do have my preaching hoops on. Um, Yes. Hold my hoops, hold my weave, hold my baby. Um, so I'm excited to be with you guys. It's been, it's been a hot minute. I don't think I've been with you since like November. Yeah, even though you see my face all the time. Yes, thank you. Um, so tonight I have a little bit, sorry, love the voice, just embrace it. Um, I have a little bit of a different, um, a different style word for me. I like to preach. And this is more teachy, which is not always my, uh, it's not my standard, but I'm excited. Um, I'm like, I have all this passion and all this fire, and I'm like, God, like, he, guys, he's like unearthing stuff in me, and it's so cool. And I'm, it, I feel like it's in seed form right now, and I can't wait till there's more for me to deposit of it, because um, it's cool. But like, I'm like, yeah, God, let's just like fire, passion, raw. And he's like, yes, yeah, so you're going to teach. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I was a little annoyed with him on it, to be real. But I always go to the standard of this, if this is the last time I ever got to be with your group, if this is the last time I ever got to speak to these people, what would I say? And honestly, the word I'm bringing to you is a word I brought to second years. Um, but I feel like, um, I feel like it's for you. Um, and, it, and it's a leadership word, and second year is a lot about leadership, but um, look to the person to your right and to your left. They're a leader. You're a leader. You're here because you're a leader. Um, so it's, it's, a little, it's a little different for me, but even in praying, the Lord reminded me. He's like, why are you passionate about raising good leaders? What, what, is, that, what is that passion for you of raising healthy, strong leaders that can reproduce themselves? And it's Acts 20 for me. I can't read Acts 20 and not be wrecked in a hundred different ways. Um, and I love, I love when Paul talks at the end, um, at the end of that um, chapter. And it starts at verse 32. He says, "I commit you to God and to the word, to the word of His grace, which can, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I've not, co I've not co coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing." Um, I should have worn my contacts. <laughs> you yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself when he said, it's more blessed to give than receive. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They all wept as they embraced and kissed him. What grieved them the most was his statement that they would never see his face again, and then they accompanied him to his ship. I love Paul, and if you have heard me, if you've been a young adults, 
you read my Facebook. <laughs> like, I love Paul. I've spent probably the last six months studying, um, studying him. I'm fascinated by him. I'm fascinated by the way he leads. I'm fascinated by the way he discipled. I'm fascinated by the way he loved. Um, and so I, I love that his, in, in his in his parting, he was ex- exhorting the leaders that he was with. And in his parting, they were so grieved for him to leave. Like, and not like the soulish, like, oh, I'm so, like, you know, like, I'm sure there's some of that. But they were so grieved because I feel like they must have known who was leaving them. Um, and I, I love that, that whole chapter. And, and in it, he talks about how he doesn't have anyone's blood on his hands because he always presented the whole truth. Um, and it's really important to me in that whole chapter, guys, I would encourage you just to break it down and study it because, um, I was actually in GTU one night last year and somebody just read like a reference of it. And I sat back there and sobbed for like two hours because it like marked me forever for kingdom and how to lead and how to pour myself out. And he really even breaks down some good leadership concepts. So I'd encourage you, um, to really dig into that. Um, So when we hear the word leadership, it conjures up a lot. I don't care about the Wi-Fi network. Thank you. Um, It conjures up a lot of a lot of ideas in our head. And I think sometimes it's like this Christian like buzzword, like like it's so like in church culture can be super overused. Like, what do you lead? I mean, I remember being at a conference and somebody like meeting me and being like, "Okay, like, tell me what you lead. And I'm like, "Um, how about ask me my name, like, let's start there, where I'm from, what I do, but it's like this big thing of like, well, I'm over blah, 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 and I'm in charge of la, 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 and I lead the quilting bee, and I, you know I don't lead the quilting bee, you know I don't, (laughs) Kristen does, but I don't, (laughs) Kristen leads the baking club, I don't lead that either, Um, but it comes into this thing of like, well, what do you lead? What do you lead? What do you lead? And and it can be like it's it gets to this creepy, gross, titley thing where it's like, well, what title do you hold? What position do you hold? Who are you leading? Well, here's the deal: everyone's a leader. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't it, like it doesn't matter. John Maxwell defines leadership, um, and he says it's not about titles, positions, or flow charts. It's about one life influencing another. Whether or not you recognize it, you're leading people. The question isn't if any of you are leaders, which you all are anyway. Um, And some of you need to hear that. You're a leader. Um, The question is, who are you leading? And are you doing it effectively? Because if I didn't know that I'm leading, how do I know if I'm doing it effective? Um, And I've I've learned a lot of things (laughs) about leadership, and I don't think by any capacity that this is like, the end-all, be-all, inclusive word. I don't think in any way that I have arrived. Um, I happily learn new things every day in regard to this area, but I feel like there's some things that I learned the hard way that I don't want you to have to learn the hard way because I'm not a good leader if I don't pass on the wisdom that I learned. Um, Because a lot of times, especially with young leaders, Um, and I'm really thankful that we are in a culture that does not do this, but a lot of times people don't impart wisdom and things to us um, because they feel like um, people get threatened. Um, And this is free, but a good leader is always looking to replace themselves. Replace, make yourself replaceable. You, like, you need to. (laughs) Because here's the thing, if you're going from glory to glory, you, like, even if it's, even if you, the Lord told you, you are here for 25 years, make yourself replaceable because as you continue to grow in your authority and in your anointing, you're going to get greater responsibilities anyway. So you need to have people that can execute the things that you do because you're never going to move out of the place that you're in if there's not somebody to take that place so that you can go to the greater glory. Um, but a lot of times people don't teach us stuff because they're threatened. If you're a chick, I'm sorry, it's even worse for you. Just is. Um, again, thankful that we live in a house that celebrates women. But um, I can tell you when I took the stage and preached on a Sunday, I watched people get up and leave and not come back. <laughs> like, it's real life. It's real life. Um, I mean, I spoke somewhere um, a few weeks ago that when I was like a main speaker at that conference before, people wrote on their surveys, you had a woman speak. 
And they were like, you're speaking next year. <laughs> and I've spoke every year there since. But um, you don't, it's, it's, there's just, if, you, if you're going to throw a pity party about it, you're not going to advance. So it's not anything like that. But um, just be real that there's some things that we have to learn the hard way. And so if somebody's going to impress them upon us and teach them, then it's good to learn. <laughs> Um, the first thing I would um, wish that I knew was you will bloom where you're planted. Every season of life comes with the capacity to lead at some level. You don't have to be the senior pastor of a mega church to be a leader. You don't need a title or a position. And when we stop despising our mission, mission field and humble, and humble ourselves in those humble beginnings, that's when we start to become effective. Plant your feet. <laughs> Don't fight God and bloom there. I made a really conscious choice to bloom here. Really conscious. I did not want to. I moved back here um, to this area when I got out of Bible school and literally for two years had every single item I owned packed in Rubbermaid totes under my bed because I wanted to be able to leave like in one moment. And like um, before I was part of this house, like, I, I had wanted to go to Bethel. I even got a job out there um, that I had accepted, but, like, the Lord was like, nope, don't go. Um, and also before I came here, I had, like, offers um, to do, like, dream things, but the Lord was like, nope, 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 nope. But I always was like, I was never settled. I was always like, okay, but what's next? But what about that? But what if we do this? But what about this? But God, like, maybe one day. And part of it was I was terrified of missing it. First of all, you can't miss his will if he has your heart. <laughs> it's not a needle in a haystack. Like, even when you're, like, way out here, if you're, he'll be like, okay, come back. Like, this is what I'm telling you. So um, I was super unsettled, super unsettled. Um, but the thing is, you don't have to wait for some big, fancy moment of a lifetime to start being who you are. Um, I didn't wait for someone to commission me and be like, Kelly, to do. I literally joined a small group at this church. I didn't want to. The Lord told me I had to, and I was like, I don't know anybody. And then I realized, I'm like, I've never been in a small group. Like, I've always led them. <laughs> like, that's always been my job. Like, what? And I'm like, I don't know any of these people. And then I was like, a little offended, because I'm like, ain't none of you people trying to be my friend. <laughs> and then the Lord was like, okay, what would you do if they were like new at your youth group? And I was like, well, I would have like taken them out to lunch. He's like, okay, do that. So every week it's a different girl out to lunch. And you know, some of them are very, very good friends of mine now, but um, I came into the spot where I started discipling some of them. Cause I like met with them and I'm like, oh, you're like 18, what? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, let's talk. <laughs> But I started building relationship and doing life and, and walking things out with them. But I didn't wait for someone to say to me, like, okay, hey, like, you've been at this church for a few months. Like, you can do whatever you want. Like, or you, you know you're allowed to serve here. Or you know you're allowed to do this. I literally just started doing life with people and having relationship. But if we wait for this big commissioning moment of, like, you are now knighted, the queen or the king of blah, blah, blah sphere, then you're, you're not ever going to get it. Um, and not that um, none of this is motivated by a drive for a title or a position or authority, but it all is motivated by the go of the gospel that says go into all the world and make disciples of nations because you can't disciple a nation if you don't disciple a person, you know, if don't tell me. Don't tell me that you're a Christian if you can't even do what he said to do. <laughs> like, he's clear on that. He's really clear on, on discipleship. He's really clear on going. He's really clear on furthering his kingdom. So if I'm waiting for someone to tell me to do it, then, or to give me such and such title, like, I was a worshiper at this church for a really long time before I ever got on the stage, and I didn't do it at, the, at my asking <laughs> at all. <laughs> But it's, it's those things because, like, my old pastor told me once, he's like, Kelly, this is how leadership works. You don't find someone for a position. You see who's doing it and then say, oh, hey, you're already functioning in this role. Here you go. Here's your title. Here's your thing because they're already doing it. Because the thing is, it's who we are. It's not what we do. Like, I can't train someone 
to be passionate about the gospel. I can't train someone to love people. I can't train someone to hunger and thirst after righteousness. I can't train someone to want his kingdom to come. There's a certain amount of hunger and drive in there. And honestly, um, it makes me really sad because I've, I've run with a lot of people that lost it. One person I went to Bible school with that I graduated with is like loves Jesus, one out of like 15 of us. And people that just went like squirrely, mixed squirrely, people I never thought would. And yeah, that's a new word too. Hope this is being recorded. And, um, and like that grieves my heart. But a lot of them, man, I just watched people trample their dreams, their passion, their desires, their heart, because because for a host of reasons. But the thing is, I can help, I can help train somebody, I can teach you character, I can teach you con- teach you leadership models, but I can't put this hunger in you. And that thing of Paul saying, I pour my life out like a drink offering, like that, I can't teach somebody to want to do that. And the thing is, if you're waiting for someone to commission you or give you some big blah thing, that's not going to come. That's not that lifestyle. In Psalm 78, 70 um, and 71, it says, he chose David, his servant, and took him from sheep pens. From tending the sheep, he brought him to be the shepherd of his people, Jacob, of Israel, his inheritance. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart, with skillful hands, he led them. David bloomed in fields with sheep. How do you think he learned to shepherd people? Sheep. (laughs) Your environment and your current assignment can teach you a lot if you let it. A lot. Um, Like, Honestly, I had a girl call me. It was hilarious. But, like, it was her first real-world moment. And she was like, oh, my gosh, Kelly, I just need counsel. Can you please call me? This is, like, emergency. I need your prophetic insight and wisdom. And I'm thinking, like, oh, my gosh, you moved 14 hours away. Like, I, like what's wrong? I'm thinking, like, bad, okay? I'm like, okay, like, what's wrong? I called her, like, hey. She's, like, texting me, like, emergency, emergency, call me. And she never does that. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? So I'm like, hey, like, what's going on? Like, blah, blah, blah. She's like, oh, my gosh, Kelly, I have this job. She's like, it's nothing to do with my calling. It's nothing to do with what I want to do in 20 years. It's nothing to do with anything. And I have to pay my bills, so I don't know what to do. And I literally burst out hysterically laughing. And I was like, welcome to being a (laughs) grown-up. Like, like, yes, you have to pay your bills. Yes. Like, I know this isn't furthering your dream at the moment, but, like, living out of your car also is not furthering your dream. So, like, go to work, cupcake. But, like, the thing is, you can either choose to look at something like being in sheep pens and being like, this is the worst thing I've ever done. Or you can be like, wow, God, what are you teaching me? Because the thing is, you're field is teaching you things for your next assignment and your next assignment and your next assignment. I started with fifth graders. Then I moved to starting a youth ministry. Then I moved to a Bible school and all those things taught me things to give me now. And this season is teaching me things that I'm sure in my future seasons I will learn so much from and glean from. But the thing is you either choose to learn the lesson or you don't. You can hate, you can hate every day of your existence. You can walk around your college campus or your job or whatever and think like, oh my gosh, I'm stuck here for this many hours today. Or you can be like, sweet God, what are you trying to teach me? Like, even if it's nothing more than learning how to walk with him in the cool of the day, because that in itself will teach you so much in leadership, because you need to do it there too. But I think a lot of it comes down to when we get in the spot, like, guys, I know what it is. Like, I'm not going to talk about it tonight at length, but I've slayed the self-promotion dragon. I've slayed the insecurity dragon. I've slayed, I've, I've dealt with all those things, so I get it. I've been in the spot of hating the waiting, hating and being so antsy, being like, okay, what, like, what, could it be this? Could it be that? Can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do that? Like, blah, blah, blah. like I seriously hate these like conferences and things because I came back like a psycho because every time like they flashed a little ad I'm like lord am I supposed to do that like or that or that like every single one every single I'm like Jesus is it that one like what is it he's like no I told you where to be oh yeah but yeah I'm so smart you guys (laughs) have no idea 
<laughs> but I know what it is to be in that space of like, oh my gosh, like, should I do that? And you feel like super unstable in your soul. And that's what it ultimately is. Okay, but that is because I don't trust you. But there comes a point where I have to recognize God's either good or he's not. I have to decide which one he is. I'm either going to choose to trust him or I'm not. He either is the one that every good gift comes from or he's a liar. He's either good and not withholding good things from me or he's a mean dad that's punishing me. And guys, I get it. I haven't, I haven't lived some rose-colored life. I, I have led under... And by led, I don't mean like, oh, I'm awesome. I mean, I have learned how to develop leadership skills in some hard environments, hard environments, which I'm now thankful for. But in the moments, I was like, Jesus, what is going on? Like when I had my first ministry job and they didn't pay me and you have to go to them finally after a month and a half and be like, hey, remember that time you were going to pay me on a weekly basis? When's that, when's, when's that going to start? And they're like, yeah, we don't have any money. And I was literally like, Lord, what the heck? Because <laughs> on the day that I got offered that job, I got offered like six-figure income jobs. So I'm like, Lord, I said yes to this, and you said you'd take care of me, and what's going on? He's like, are you a hireling? And I was like, no. He's like, okay, then you'll stay. And I did. No paycheck. Blood, sweat, tears, 20-hour days every day, seven days a week. And I don't say that to puff me up. I say it to tell you that, like, I learned some of the greatest lessons that I've ever learned about servanthood, about serving someone's vision, about being humble, about advancing the kingdom at any cost. I got to see some great fruit. I still, um, the people that I got to run with in that season, I still get to, I'm in, I'm in relationship with, I still get to see the fruit of their seasons, but none of that was comfortable. But being a leader is not comfortable. When you're growing, you're always going to be outside of your comfort zone. It's that thing Paul talked about. We're hard-pressed on every side. I feel like that hard-pressed on every side is like the Jesus mold, <laughs> like whoosh, getting put on you and the edges being scraped off. If we look at it as like, yes, I'm becoming more like Jesus today. Okay, I can feel it, but man, okay, Lord. Um, but in the beginning of the season I'm in right now, the Lord said to me, because I was like, what is going on, Lord? <laughs> like, what is this stuff I'm feeling? Like, he said to me, he said, um, endurance only comes by resistance. And I was like, what? I was like, that is, not what, that is not what I want to hear at this moment, Lord. But the thing is, David had Saul. And you'll probably have one too. And I had this boss. She, well, she refined me. Oh, she refined me. And it, I mean, it was, it was hideous. It was hideous. And I was so upset. Like, I'm working at this like dream job, like loving what I do. But my boss literally was like on a mission to like ruin my life. And I'm like, Lord, can I please get a new job? He's like, nope, you'll stay. What? <laughs> like, nope, you'll stay. No, I won't. Like, I can't go anywhere. What are you doing? Um, I mean, homegirl like wrecked my life, my reputation, I mean, anything, anything. I mean, to the point when, when the hospital found out how bad it was, like, the CEO of the hospital was, like, calling me on the daily to be like, please come back. We fired her. Like, when I tell you it was bad, I don't mean, like, my boss didn't like me. I mean, like, tried to ruin everything, everything about, like, my character and anything. But in the thick of it, the Lord said, like, he said to me, like, David had Saul. This is yours. Like, who are you going to be? Who are you going to be in these moments? And... The thing is, I had moments where I could have reacted. I could have acted. Um, I could have acted ways that are way outside of who I am. I had every right to, quote unquote, by um, the world standards. I had everybody being like, you need to go do this and this, blah, blah, blah. But the fact of the matter is, even in her vulnerable moments when I could have gotten a leg up, um, that was never who I was. Because David, when he had the opportunity to kill Saul in his vulnerable moment, he didn't. He didn't. And, and the way that you treat those that mistreat you in their moments of vulnerability, it's really telling of your character. It's really telling of, of your character. <clears throat> Leaders love and they, and they lead strong and they don't trample people even when they're quote-unquote justified. It's not fair. It's not fair. But it's growing you, it's making you, it's molding you, it's shaping you, it's making you more like Jesus. It's teaching you, like if, if nothing else, it teaches you 
how not to lead. It teaches you, okay. And not from, well, when I'm, when I'm in charge, do this. It's remember that spot. Remember that feeling. Remember, I don't, tra- remember that thing. I don't trample people. <laughs> remember, rem- you take those moments with you. And so sometimes if it's nothing more than, hey, I need to take note of this then take that with you, but don't compromise your integrity because if you want to walk in the power of Jesus, then you need to walk in the character of Jesus to carry that power through because if we're supposed to walk like we've been talking about these last few days in power, love, and a sound mind, then if I, I gotta have, if I want the power, I gotta have the love and if I want both, then I have to have the character and honestly, side note, you're not gonna have the sound mind if you're not walking in the character because you're gonna be so conflicted because you know what's right. Side note. (laughs) Um, The next point is be intentional. High impact living will accelerate your growth. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27 says, do do you not, sorry, I cannot literally read today. No, it is, it's because I know where my contacts because I'm amazing. Um, Do you not know that in a race that all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize." Every day I ask myself these, these things that I'm going to tell you. What am I doing to help me meet the goals of the day, the goals of the season, and the goals of my life? Every day. Every day I want to be seeding into my destiny somehow. I want to be intentional because it's really easy to squander a season. It's really easy. And then after the fact, you're like, crap. It's really easy um, to not recognize the opportunities that are around you. Um, if, if you want a great word on being present, Ryan Legidal has a powerful, impactful, life-changing word on being present that he should probably, like, blog about or something. So, yeah, I mean, like, cha- like, it's changing me still. Two weeks out, it's still, like, messing me up. But if you're going to be a good leader, you got to be intentional and you got to be present. But... It's even being intentional of what am I doing to grow myself? Because here's the deal. An Olympic athlete trains a lot different than a high school athlete. One of, um, one of my sister and I's really good friends was my sister Katie's best friend. She actually played in the Olympics um, in their last um, summer games. And she's just a basketball star, standout, great, incredible. And I mean, just a great girl too. We love her dearly. And... Uh, she would practice for hours and hours a day. She'd practice two hours before school and two hours after school. And in my head, I'm like, homegirl, how are you ramping that up when you go to college? She did. And now she's in the Olympics. And the way she trains now is, like, totally different. Even, like, her physical appearance is totally different. Like, homegirl is ripped now. Isn't she? Like, you know what I'm talking about. Homegirl's ripped now. Like, she never was. I'm like, Steph, what you doing? <laughs> but, um... She trains way differently. And so the thing is, if I'm a leader, I'm going to train way differently. Or not even that, as somebody that's carrying a destiny, I'm going to train way differently for my call than if I'm just Joe Schmo, regular run-of-the-mill person. So that's why I ask myself those questions because there's certain mandates that are on our life just by being a Christian, by being a lover and a follower of Christ that, duh, those are why wouldn't we do, like, yes, they're mandates. We do them. We love them. They become our life. But there are other things that he might call you to that are, that are different. Um, and, and they're to steward your gifts or to steward your callings or to steward, um, even some of it is to steward the people that, that he's given you because in different seasons, he'll ask you to lead in different ways. Like, sometimes it's a, like, shut your mouth season. Some, you know, it's, 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 it's being sensitive to what is he saying? How is he training me in this season? Um, so I want to encourage you to ask, ask yourself and ask Holy Spirit what you're doing to steward your gifts and callings on your life. What things are you doing now to grow your leadership gift? Who are you sitting under? Who are you listening to? Who are you letting speak into your life? Like, I'll be real with you guys. Like, the second year students watched it last year. Like, if I didn't have Dr. Barry mentoring me last year, I wouldn't be in this spot, wouldn't be. I mean, he grew me like years and years and years in the Lord. 
But it's because I submitted myself fully. I was like, listen, like whatever. Like I saw who was in front of me. I saw the opportunity and I was like, whatever, whatever you need me to do. And like, there were times where I kind of wanted to punch him, but, but I wanted to, and I told him too, a lot. But, but in, the, in those times, you know what I do? Like, okay, can I carry your stuff? Thanks. Like, like, okay, can I get that for you? Like, okay, hey, yeah, let me just carry it for you. Do you need water? Okay, you want two water bottles? Yeah, I know you want cough drops. Here you go. Like, and the more mad I was, the more I'm like, okay, what else can I do? <laughs> like, because I wanted every single thing that I could get from him because I saw who, was, who, who the Lord was giving me to study under and learn and grow from. And I was like, okay, what can I do? <laughs> like, teach me. <laughs> teach me right now because you could leave tomorrow. So teach me right now. But in that spot, um, I recognized when he asked me to help him with GTU, my life was like so full and busy, so full and busy. And I'm like, Lord, I do not have time for that crap. And he's like, yeah, you do. And I'm like, I know when he asked me, I knew it was a yes, but come on. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll be there. And like, guys, like we went really late every single night <laughs> and I worked really early every single day and got up at five. Like, and I would do, I would do it all over again all over again. But I recognize like, okay, this sacrifice is pushing me ahead. This sacrifice, I like, I can go around the mountain 700 times to get what I can get in nine months. Okay, I'll take the, I'll take that one. And not that it was a shortcut or an easy route because it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't, it still isn't. Um, <laughs> but but I was like, no, like I want to grow. So I'm going to submit myself to this. When I wanted to get better at preaching, I studied the craft, man. I studied how people minister. I watched podcasts of, of anybody you name, like, because I wanted to study their skills and how they did it. Um, when I go to these conferences, I watch, how do you give that word? How, how, how do you steward the spirit? Because I want to learn. When I wanted, like, when I was super insecure on keys, I was like, okay, crap, I'm going to take piano lessons, and I hate this. Like, okay, like, I get mentorship in worship because I feel really insecure in it. Like, because if I want to grow in something, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep exposing myself because I'm being intentional to train myself because I want to steward this thing. Because here's the deal. I want to run this race. I want to run it well. And when I get to the end, I don't want to be like oh yeah, okay, Jesus, like I had a really sweet, happy life. Like, because I forsook, I forsook stability a long time ago. <laughs> like, like I, I forsook all that stuff because the thing is, if you're going to run at a different pace, because an Olympic athlete runs at a way different pace, right? Than like homegirl, you know, like <laughs> it's a, it's the different pace. But the thing is, like, if you're going to, if you're going to have a different call, then, then you're going to run at a different pace. And so your life can't look like everyone else's. And you have to be intentional with the things that you've been given. Like when the Lord started like really, um, really giving me this prophetic gift. And he like told me like, use or lose it, sister. Like we had a real talk because <laughs> I was running from it. And he was like, open your mouth and talk. Like, if I tell you, then open your mouth. I had, like, people give me words, like, that said, everything you see, like, go on it. Everything you hear, go on it. Like, he's trying to develop you. So it's different in every season, but, but still be intentional. Ask the Lord what those things are to steward this season. Um, you don't have to know what you're stewarding. Like, I blog because I know I'm supposed to write books. Like, I write really crappy songs because I want to get better at writing songs, <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's like, it's not rocket science, but it's, it's fitting all those things in, because there is a lot required of you, I get that, live it, <laughs> I get it, there's a lot required of you, there's a lot of pressures, but even if you can learn how to navigate those now, and keep your character, and maintain your integrity, even under pressure, and maintain who you are, and maintain your relationship with the Lord in busyness, and continue to grow while growing others, if you can learn those things when you're stewarding one, when you're stewarding five, when you're stewarding ten, then when you're stewarding hundreds, you can do it and you can do it well. And it isn't this big like, oh my gosh, how do I do this? I don't know what I'm doing. Because you've learned how to do it and the Lord can trust you with the more because you've learned how to do it and be effective. It's really important to you. Um, and it's part of, and it's part of, 
it's part of that being intentional thing and exposing yourself to leadership and submitting and all those things um, and training because it's it's that Second Timothy one sixteen that that fanning or one six sorry that fanning into flame the gift that was given to you by the laying on of hands. Like I recognize and I love impartation. I'm like who I'm right now. <laughs> Like, let's do it. You guys all know that about me. I'm like, yes, you can pray for me. And I don't care if you're like five. Those are the ones that I'm like, please pray for me. I literally go up to children. I'm like, please, I'm begging you. When you get laid out by a six-year-old repetitively, you're like, yes, you're carrying something I'm not. Please give it to me. But there's some things we get by importation, but they increase when you walk them out. You know, they, they, they increase, they grow. Um, oh, crap, time is flying. Um, next one is submit. You don't know everything. I don't either. <laughs> I do not. Um, and I know that that can be, that can be a shocking revelation when you're like, oh, my destiny purpose has been revealed by the Lord and I'm going to do this and do that. And I'm going to conquer the world. Listen, you know, I'm the first one that's like, I want to go to Russia, but I know I cannot go to Russia right now. Like, I know, I know. Like, it's about submitting. And um, I get that thing. Um, I get that thing when something is so stirred in you and you're, like, so passionate. Because I think you all can tell that I'm a little bit passionate. Um, this is actually reigned in passion. If you would have known Kelly five years ago, it was not reigned in passion, and it was cray. Not in a good way. <laughs> you can, yes, I have great pastors to thank for subduing me. But um, I can still be passionate and submit. I can even be passionate about someone else's vision and submit. Um, but the thing is, I'm only going to be covered to the degree that I let somebody cover me. And so um, if I'm following my leaders as they follow Christ, I can't go wrong. I cannot go wrong. Like, I'll be real, and a lot of you know this about me. Like, I was I was planning to move like a year ago, and I didn't, I really wanted to move. <laughs> um, and I was like, yeah, I was passionate. I was like excited. Blah, blah, blah. But like, ultimately, like submitted to the Lord and submitted to the spiritual authority in my life and was so thankful that I did. So incredibly thankful. I still am thankful. Um, but when we submit to those healthy, those healthy godly afford. You reap all the benefits of being a son. Because here's the deal. We all have blind spots. Like, have you ever had somebody come to you and you're like, oh, man, that is so true, and I did not know it. <laughs> like, okay, yep, didn't see that one. Like, we all have blind spots. And the thing is, especially mothers and fathers in the faith, sometimes they can see out way farther than we can. Maturity can see way out further than we can. Or insight and wisdom lets them see out further but the thing is it's it's not ever submitting yourself to abuse it's not ever submitting yourself to control but if you're following someone as they follow Christ you're you're safe <laughs> if, like if somebody's like shave your head and do this like then you should maybe ask Jesus if that's what he's saying but like follow them as they follow Christ and you really you really can't go wrong. You really can't go wrong. And sometimes that does mean, you know, forsaking your preference and hearing things you don't want to hear and um, sitting when you want to run and shutting up when you want to scream, you know, like, but, but those things grow you. But not only that, they make you so much more gentle as a leader when you want to execute that. Um, because instead of being like, I told you do this, it's like, hey, I know, I know how you feel. Like, I know you're feeling this and this and this. And I know that you really want to run. And I know you feel like I'm holding you back, but I'm not. I prom Like, it gives you that humility and that side to lead with instead of being like, well, this is what I said and this is what happens. And people that often come out of that type of leadership, they're usually offended because they ran, like somebody told them, ma, this is it. I'm the boss. You are following me. And they didn't do it. And then they end up leading that way anyway, which just breeds dysfunction. I'm trying to think of which point I want to land on because so, so many left. Mm, okay. So also it's incredibly important and I don't care 
you know, we just watched a disc in the last session and Bill Johnson was talking about how he always prays for people. Always. He said, if you ever get in the spot where you can't personally pray for people, he's like, I don't care what sphere of influence you're in, then like, then you're doing something wrong. He's like, and he's like, even with the level of popularity that I have, I get off the stage, I sneak off, no one knows I do it. I find one person in the crowd and I go pray for them. As a leader, you have to connect with people. It's not even an option to not connect. You're not above people. You're not over people. You serve alongside. You run alongside. And I'll be honest, guys, like, I've even been challenged by the Lord. Like, I get so passionate, like, about, like, the people that are on my teams or the people that I get to lead and whatever. And, like, the Lord had to, like, really, like, give me a little, little, little talking to you because he was like, whose team? Uh, your team? Like, your team? I was like, but because I love them. Like, this is my team and I love them. And it's not even like a possessive, like, they're mine. Like, it's like, no, they're mine and I love them and I'm so glad they get to be mine. They're, and he's like, no, they're not yours. Like, you are a team together. <laughs> like, this is all of you working. I'm like, I know that. He's like, no. Like, even, like, he's teaching me to tweak the language and be like, it's not, my person or my people or but I'm like but they are because I love he's like no like even that language because we run alongside we even if even if you're in a different spot in in your race you're all on the same team and you're all running the same race you're all running to advance this kingdom so the thing is we are all on the same team it's all team Jesus here and so um even even that thing of even like being like, this, these are my people, <laughs> that's mine. Like that creates a barrier. That creates a barrier um, of even connectivity to anyone that's like outside of that sphere. Because here's the thing, Jesus isn't about cliques. He's not about social clubs. He's not about like, like, listen, you know that I love to have fun and I love to be stupid and like whatever. Like I'll hang out with anybody any day. Like let's go have fun. But he's not about like us being like, and we're doing this, and -and so-and-so's not coming, and like, he's all about, like, relationship, and covenant, and um, see, like, leaving the 99 to go after the one, like, he's the dude that got Zacchaeus out of the tree, like, and said, hey, like, I'm going to your house, bro, like, it's all about connecting with people, and sometimes that's difficult, Um, but, like, when I think about Paul, like, he was so concerned about connection with people that he wrote letters to them while he was in prison to encourage them while he was in prison because he was so concerned about connecting with his spiritual children. He was so concerned about connecting with the ones that he loved, and the thing is, if I don't connect with people, I can't lead them. I can't lead them influence you I can't lead you to be more like Jesus if I can't connect with you I mean it's it's the reason I love the prophetic the first teaching I ever heard on I was like I'm sold like sign me up today because it's Saul and his donkeys, man. Like, what's the question of your heart? Jesus is so concerned with the question of people's heart. He's so concerned with meeting people where they are. He's so concerned with the things that concern people. And if as a leader, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna model Christ, then I have to be concerned with the things that concern people. I have to bear somebody else's burdens. I rejoice when people rejoice. I weep when they weep. But the thing is, if I'm in my high tower of leadership off in my island, I can't do that. But not only that, I'm in my high tower of leadership on my island being like, hello, my name's Kelly. I'm not sure if you tripped over all my titles while you made your way up my steps, but here, I, if, if, if that's me and that's where I'm at, <laughs> sorry, I can't look at Dave King when he laughs. It makes me laugh so hard. Um, but if that's me, like, who's going to even want to come connect with me? And but not only that, you cannot be healthy in that spot. You cannot be healthy because if people feel like they have to trip over who you are to get to you or who you are not um, to get to you, um, you're going to be a really unhealthy leader because you're not ever going to surround yourself with people that can actually be honest with you and tell you where you're at. Because if you just surround yourself with yes men and yes women and people are like, yeah, you're awesome. Yeah, you rock. Like, like, you're going to be jacked up. Like, I mean, some of you guys are on the – I've served me on different teams, um, whether it be anchored, earth and fire, whatever. Like, I'm always like, hey, 
Like, I'm feeling off about this. Or like, can you just tell me like what you thought on this? Or I'm always trying to get other people's feedback, not opinions, not my ego strokes. Because listen, I want you to tell me if I'm jacked up. Like, I want you to tell me. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care. I will always receive it, even if I'm mad. Like, I'll be like, okay. Because if I'm mad, then I'm like, crap, they're right, because I'm mad. Sorry, Jane, I said crap. I was doing really good until that point. Oh, I was doing so good. Oh, so good. And I just lost it. See, you surround yourself with people that tell you that you say crap too much when you preach, and you try to learn from it. Now I said it twice. <laughs> But it's, that's the thing, though. Like, you give people space to speak, and you connect with people. But the thing is, too, like, if we really are running this thing together, if we really are in this thing together, like, think about it, man. Like, if, if I'm surrounded by that cloud of witnesses, I want to the, hear them. I want to hear their roar while I run. I can't be in the spot where I'm all about, oh, man, I'm going to lead the pack, and I'm going to run solo, and I'm going to do this. And when they see how great I am, man, they're going to be like, I knew her that one time, and blah, blah, blah. Do you know the only thing I want? want anybody to ever know about me I want them to be like I don't even know that girl's name but man she loved me yeah. like that's all I want somebody to know I don't care if anybody knows my name I don't care if they're like man she gave me this word and blah blah I just want them to know that I love them oh she did this and she did that and I got healed I don't care <laughs> Like, I want people to know that I love them and if I don't connect with people they're never going to know that he loves them like, how many times have you been in a spot, man, where it could be the littlest thing and somebody's just like, you, they see you and they know you and that makes you know that he sees you and he knows you. And as a leader, it gets harder. Man, it gets harder the more people there are, um, but you still have to be intentional. And even if it's a like, hey, man, I was thinking about you today, do it. It doesn't take that long. Because the thing is, you were thinking about them, but you got busy, and then you start, You answered your email, and then you got another phone call, and then you went and did this, and then you remembered you have to speak tonight, and then, oh, gosh, you got to leave to the prayer room, and, oh, I never texted so-and-so, and they're in the dark and twisties, and I should have just said to them, like, hey, I love you. It doesn't always have to be about the big prophetic word you have for somebody, and I love that. You know I love that. I mean... I text you all words, <laughs> and you text me words, but I love that, but the thing is, like, it's sometimes just saying, hey, I see you, I know you, because when you see and know people, they can see and know you, and you can lead from a spot of transparency that is so healthy and so pure, and it is after God's heart, because here's the deal, you guys know me, and you know when I'm jacked up, like, I'll just, I'm like, man, I'm jacked up today, <laughs> like, I have no... I have no issue showing who I am because I know who I am. Because when you know who you are, then you know who you're not. So I have no issue being like, hey, man, I'm struggling. I'm having a really hard time. Or like, listen, I'm dealing with this. Like, I had Keisha pray for me before I came in here because I'm like, listen, Keisha, my head's in like 14 different places. Like, I'm like happy about this, but like sad about that. Like, da -da -da. like I'm all over. My heart is like... I've been in this intercession thing all day. I'm like, I need to just be in the preaching thing. You know, like, I just need some clarity. But it's being real because it's that same thing. When you connect with people on a real level in relationship, then you're safe to do that. But if you're so concerned with the image and the thing, and, man, I grew up in that. I don't want that. Like, if you're so concerned with the performance and the, the routine and carrying this thing out, you will never connect with people because you will always have to, you always will have to protect or else you only surround yourself with people that you're, you feel, quote, unquote, safe with that really aren't even safe. They're just people that make you feel good. And in that spot, you're also not healthy. And if the only people that you connect with, because listen, we all connect with different people on different levels, right? Like, yeah, it's real life. Like, everyone wasn't Jonathan to David, right? We connect with people on different levels, but that doesn't mean that we don't connect with anyone. And the thing is, I might give Lisa different access to my heart than I give Curtis or whatever, but the thing is, I still give them access to my heart, and I still give them my love. I still speak into their life, and they speak into mine, and I give them the space in my life because this thing of relationship is so much more important than I think even we grasp because it was enough for God to choose to send his son here. 
Like, so when I lead with that thing of relationship in mind, I keep myself healthy. I help keep the people in, that I'm influencing healthy. I keep, I, I keep this thing open for transparency and, and love and connectivity and that they can see the Father's love. They can experience the love of Jesus. They can, they can be encouraged and I can, I can lead like him and love like him. And ultimately, as I do those things, all that stuff of like, oh my gosh, should I do this or should I do that? Or what does it look like? Or should I read 14 more books on leadership? Or should I do this? Like, I've literally never read a leadership book in my life except the Bible because I like it. <laughs> A lot. But, like, I don't feel this thing of, like, well, what would a good leader do, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, Jesus, what would you do? But when I, when I lead from that place of submitting to him and submitting to Holy Spirit and submitting to leaders and submitting to um, one another, when I lead from that place, it stops being a chore. It's not this thing that I have to do, this job, because it really becomes an overflow of your life. And Paul talks about living out of that overflow. And man, I just like had it out with the Lord at the beginning of the year. And I was like, Lord, like, I have to learn how to live out of the overflow. I have to learn. I want everything I do to be out of the overflow of relationship with you. I want everything I do to come from that place of love. I want everything that I do, whether it be in leadership, whether it be um, in servanthood, whether it be in relationship with my family or with my friends or whatever. Like, I want it to be out of the overflow of that love. I want it to be out of overflow of relationship. And as it is, like, when I'm in relationship with the Father, with the Son, with the Holy Spirit, like, I have everything that I need to not miss the mark. So I don't need to look at, like, this hoop or that hoop or which thing to jump through and whatever. Like, I I can just be at peace. I can be at rest. And a lot of that pressure stuff goes away. Because here's the thing, guys. There is always pressure. Like, it doesn't matter if you're old and it's like your homework's due. Or you're a basketball star. Or you're on a play on a stage. Or you're a pastor of a church. There's always pressure. But the thing is, you can, you can either let pressure produce things in you. Romans 5, like <laughs> perseverance, character, character, hope, yeah, all that. Yeah. Or you can let pressure be the thing that defeats you. And, and I was really fortunate um, and actually told him this recently. The pastor that I used to work for, he was always really clear to me about pressure. He was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's a pressure-filled day, Cal. I'm really feeling pressure today. I need you to pray. I need you to do this or like whatever. But he would always be kind to me when he was under pressure. He was like, if I act this way to you when I'm under pressure, it really actually shows where I have, a, have an issue I need the Lord to work out. But like the thing, like if it's this thing like, oh, I don't act like this. I only act like this. Um, then it's in there. <laughs> like it's in there. And listen, guys, there's sometimes where I'm like, crap, didn't know that was still there. All right, let's work through it, Lord. Like I'm not perfect and I'm learning this whole thing, but um, learning that despite pressure and learning what, what pressure is from what pressure is that molding pressure and what pressure is self-imposed pressure or um, pressure that isn't him telling me to jump through hoops? You know, like what pressure is just the molding and the processing and becoming more like Christ and what pressure is like performance and whatever. Like there's a difference. So please know that when I'm saying that. Because um, if we're all becoming like him, we have that pressure no matter where we are. Um, and as you know, varying degrees at different times. But if I can learn how to do all of this out of the overflow of relationship, even that just discernment of, oh, God, this is you. You're working this in me. But when I stop despising the process and the process of becoming and the process of, of, of pressure, the process of being processed <laughs> um, to be redundant, but when I stop despising pressure, when I stop despising humble beginnings, when I stop despising um, the thing that's in front of me, when I build the wall that's in front of me, you know, to, to be banning for a minute. When I build that wall in front of me and not the wall that's like six blocks away or the wall that God asked me to build 10 years ago. And he's like, dude, like the building's done. Like move forward. Come on. But when I, when I'm, when I'm walking with him, I see that thing. And the thing about process and I'll end on this, sorry, there's so much in here. I wanted to tell you. Um, the thing about process is, um, when we say yes to the process, 
Like when we're like, oh my gosh, I hate this season. I hate everything about it. I hate this, I hate that. I hate what God's doing here. I hate. Like really, we're basically saying like, I don't trust you. And listen, I don't love process <laughs> at all. <laughs> I'm like, can't we just like take a pill and fix it? Like, can't we just like, like move on? Like, can we just work through it? He's like, no, we're gonna like actually live life. But the thing about process is when I say yes to the process, I'm saying, yes, I trust you. Like, I trust that you're going to be faithful to complete the work you started in me. And I'm saying, I trust that you're good. I trust in who you are. I have faith in who you are. And so when I'm constantly bucking that thing of process and of him grooming me for greater things, of him grooming me to look like him, when I'm constantly bucking that thing, I'm basically being like, hey, like, you suck. Like, what are you doing? You don't know what you're doing. Like, and really, he's like, actually, I do. And so when we start to embrace things like pressure and process and even the hiccups guys that come along the way man like I'm like transient human right now with like no house my house is all torn up like I'm just like okay sweet tell me when it's done I'll be back like because I can get tripped out by all this stuff I can I can run around like a chicken with my head cut off and I've lived like that for a long time or I can just be like all right, it's just another piece in the process. Like literally I was like, okay, God, what are you trying to tell me? Because this is the third time this has happened. So I'm listening to you right now. You know, I'm like, this is the third time that a pipe has burst. What is going on? What are you saying? But I can choose to, to, to use all those things to grow me or I can be like, oh my gosh. And then you know that this happened and that happened and then that happened and blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. Life happens. <laughs> like, it's real life. I don't care who you are. Like, like, I mean, a lot of us heard Will Hart speak this weekend. Like, life still happens. Like, his, his wife is sick. <laughs> like, life happens. Like, we have to, we still live here. Like, we still have to experience all this. And if, and if I just constantly get ticked off about circumstance and the things around me, and I'm not rooted in that spot of relationship and love with him, see, that's why doing it out of the overflow is so important and out of this place of intimacy. If I don't, then all this stuff is going to keep me from this stuff. <laughs> And it's going to keep me from going forward. It's going to keep me from advancing. It's going to keep me from running. It's, it's going to keep me from running in who I am. And guys, we've all seen people um, come out of great adversity. And, and you know, like, man, how, how, you know what? Like, things happen to them that, like, are horrible. And I, I respect leaders like that so much. Even ones that it was self-imposed. And they're like, listen, I screwed up. But this is how I let God restore it and fix it. Or ones that got robbed from, same thing. I, I have so much respect for them. But the thing is, I can either despise this whole process or I can set myself up for a later failure. And I'll leave you with this. Um, when I was in Watertown, um, I was really honored. Um, we had Ted Haggard stay with us for a week. And we were the first church, actually, that he ever preached at after um, his, his fall and scandal and whatever. And I, I was forever marked by something he said. Like, it's, it still hangs with me every day. And he's like, listen, like, I knew that this stuff was an issue in seed form. I knew it. Had people come give me words. The Lord talked to me directly. Like, I knew when it was this big that it was an issue. I knew the spots in my heart that were broken. I knew the childhood trauma. I knew the stuff that wasn't fixed. And I just kept ignoring, kept ignoring, kept ignoring, kept ignoring, kept ignoring, and not getting whole and in that process and not ever submitting to the Lord's processing or even just being like, hey, I'm hurting. Like, I need help. And because of that, because I had an image to maintain, I was like, I had, you know, I needed people to respect me. I needed this whole thing. And he's like, listen, like, God was faithful to complete what he started in me. And like, he wanted me whole. Not that he thinks God did something. Like, he's like, no, I mean, horrible choices. They were awful. He's like, they were horrible. But like, God was so concerned with me, the process being completed in me that he started, that like, he's gonna see it through. And I can choose to submit to that process or I can keep bucking it, but he's gonna, he's faithful. He's gonna keep trying to process me and refine me and keep trying to address his things. Like, so many opportunities for years and years and years. And even his wife was like, yeah, I would come to him and be like, dude, I think there's an issue. I think there's, there's something lacking. There's something missing. There's a spot that's, that's off. And he's like, no, like, I'm fine. Like, whatever. So even just by, by submitting to process, we, we, 
We prevent ourselves from having to deal with the stuff that's already there in a huge, massive way that affects a lot of people. And uh, for myself personally, like, that's one of the reasons I never wanted this, man. I never wanted this life. I didn't, I did not, um, because I didn't want to fall. Honestly, I didn't want to fail. I didn't want to fall. Um, you know, a lot of you know my dad was a pastor for 15 years, and like I watched how many people were hurt when he walked away. I have seen his choices um, make a lot of people walk away from the Lord. I've seen a lot of um, damage for myself personally, for my family, for, um, you know, like my immediate family, um, even in the, just the relationship with the Lord. And the thing is, I didn't ever want to be in that spot ever, 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 ever. And um, even the day that, that like somebody was like, no, like this is the call the Lord has for you and we're anointing you right now and this is happening. I'm like, no, it's not. They're praying over me. It's like this whole moment. I mean, like, it's this whole crazy story. Some guy drove like a half an hour because he had a word from the Lord, like, to do this whole thing to me. Like, it was this crazy, like, God moment. And I was really didn't know what those were at that point. <laughs> so I was like, they're praying for me. And they literally, like, stop praying. They're like, stop, stop right now. Stop. What is your issue? <laughs> like, why will you not receive this? And I'm like, because I don't want it. <laughs> And, like, literally in front of, like, hundreds of people, I had to process my crap and be like, I don't want this. Because, sorry, Jane. I don't want this because, <laughs> because like, I don't want to screw up. I don't want to fail. I don't want to ruin people's lives. I don't want to be fake. I don't want to be phony. I don't want to, I don't want to squander this thing. But that wasn't a reason to say no. <laughs> it's a reason to do it and do it well and do it in a place of health. So I want to encourage all of you guys that you are set up, man. You are set up. And like, I wish I was where you were when you were this. Age. Man, I wish. I wish that I was in a spot. Um, even just like, I lost my marbles at our staff meeting and cried about it, so I'm not going to cry. Like, even just to be in this culture, like, you don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand what you have. And you don't understand that uh, seasons change. And you never, know, you never know when God's going to pull you out of something. Like, I was in a spot of, like, I mean, we pioneered revival. Man, like, we, and it's still, like, just a culture of miracles and health and growth. And, like, and I'm so happy. But, like, I mean, the big joke where we lived was, like, oh, Kelly moved here and never ate again. Because it was, like, two years of, like, fasting and praying. Like, just that's what we did. And, just plowed this kingdom, man, worked our butts off, and, and, and it caught, <laughs> and revival caught in our students, and then it spilled over to the whole church, and it was great, and it's sustainable, and it's awesome. There's so much fruit, and it's wonderful, but like right when things started ramping up, the Lord was like, okay, you're done. I was like, excuse me, what? He's like, you're done here. Like, like it's time to go. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what are, you, what are you talking about? And, and I, after the fact, was like, oh my gosh, I didn't enjoy the moment or I didn't get this, this, and this that I should have gotten and I should have listened to these things and I should have um, enjoyed that moment or I should have learned from that moment or I should have gleaned from this person or I could have, I could have grown so much in this area if I sat under that person's leadership. And the thing is, you guys are in this spot, man, of really, and I'm not saying this to blow anyone up or because... I work here or because I have a microphone and I want more microphones. I'm saying it because it's real life. Like, you're in a spot where you're in a healthy body that wants this, that wants the, wants the kingdom, that wants the New Testament, that wants his kingdom to come and his will to be done. And you don't get that everywhere. And you don't get it in a place, you don't get it in a culture. Uh, always get, you don't always have a culture that lines up with those ideals. They might want this, but the culture doesn't breed it. And there's a certain culture of honor that has to happen for those things to come because honor and love are the currency in the kingdom. It is like you guys are in that spot, but not only that, you have incredible people that can speak into your life and mentor you and teach you. If there's anything you wanna learn, you can learn it. You could learn it. You could submit yourself to anyone here, and you could learn it. Anyone on staff, anyone on staff in our school, anyone on staff in the church, you could submit yourself and learn anything you want to learn. 
resources at your disposal. You have the school of supernatural ministry. I mean, you have all these things that a lot of people don't have. Take advantage of every single one of them. Like God is positioning you, man. And um, I just feel like um, I'm turning to Pastor Scott because I've tried to close 17 times, but I really am closing. Um, it's the gift of the preaching. Um, God, I really feel like God wants you to know. I don't know who this is for, if it's a corporate thing, but like he's not closing doors in your face. He's opening doors that you don't see yet. He's, he's opening doors. Um, as you sow things in faithfulness, man, it's like, you're, it's like when you put bulbs in in the fall and they come up in the spring. Like you might be sowing things and you're like, what is this thing for? What's that thing for? But man, you're sowing those things. So look at your field and pay attention to your field and take care of your field and water your field and pull the weeds out when they need to be. And, and you know, okay, the climate is this. So what do I need to do to tend to this the right way? Pay attention to those things. Ask Holy Spirit to teach you. But God's putting you in a place of, Sit down, be quiet. Nobody needs what you have. And I feel like some of you, um, I feel like have felt a little bit restrained um, or held back by him or have been kind of pushing through that thing of like, well, do you know who I am? Do you know? like, And he's like, yeah, I see you. I know you. Like, I'm the God who sees. And I want to tell you from a, from a leadership standpoint, I see you. I know you. We see you. We know you. We know who you are. We know what you carry. And we know the greatness that's in you. And, and in that spot, um, there's a grooming period. But in no, in no means is God saying, like, don't do. <laughs> He's saying, go. It's the go of the gospel. And by being a sent one, go be sent where you are. Go be sent. You don't have to be sent to Mozambique. You don't have to be sent to wherever. Be sent here. Be a sent one here. He still commissioned you. He still sent you. And he's not slamming things in your face. He's saying, like, no, like, you don't understand. Like, you're going to be really happy that you had this season. And honestly, guys, like, from being in a similar program, like, I draw off of what I learned five years ago all the time. All the time. And, and the things that are, that are um, being imparted to you, the things that you're learning, the things that you're learning in relationship with him, like those things you're going to carry with you forever. And they are keys that you hold in your hand to open doors that are closed. But I feel like the Lord wants you to know um, every, every word spoken over you is still true even if you don't see it right now. And so don't be discouraged. Um, don't be discouraged that you don't see it. Or don't be discouraged that even when somebody else is like, hey, I see this in you. Don't be discouraged that you don't see it. Because the greatness that, the greatness that lies within you, it's palpable. It's, I mean, it is, it is a real life thing. Like I could go down this table and tell you all who you are and tell you all how awesome you are and tell you all how amazing you are and tell you all how you're going to change the world and tell you all the ways that God has crafted you and made you awesome and great and how well you're running. I could, every one of you, because it is every one of you. It is every one of you. And hear that. It is not exclusive. It is every one of you. But I think what God wants you to know is this period of grooming is invaluable. It is priceless. This time of processing, it might not always feel awesome. It might feel uncomfortable, but he's using it, man. And he is, it's, he's sculpting you. He's molding you. He's shaping you. And that is going to catapult you and launch you so much further than you would have gone without it. And I know, like, I know what it is to be, um, to be, like weary in the well-doing, to be in that spot of like, we're really doing this again, like it's another day, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, like when you're in those moments, stop and ask yourself, why am I here? Why did I say yes? Why did I say yes that I want to do GTU? Why did I say yes to the call in my life? Why did I say yes to that thing? And if that doesn't work into passion, then just just think on his love. Think on him. Look at him. Like, set your gaze on him, man. All this stuff fades into the periphery because really the only thing that matters is him. And for me, the only thing that matters to me is pleasing my father. The only thing that matters to me is getting the well done. Like, that's what I want. I don't care if 
I don't care if, if anything else happens other than that. I don't care if I don't see one more miracle if, if it means my, I'm not promoted. I want to see miracles because that's his heart. So when I keep focusing on who he is and, and the call and the mission and keep vision before me, because without that vision, I perish. When I keep that before me, even in the day-to-day, in the nine-to-five, in the mundane, in the routine, or the feeling overwhelmed, that will push you to more. So I just want you to stand up. I just want to pray over you really quick. I'm sorry. It's so late. Um, yeah, so God, <laughs> I thank you for this group of leaders, God. And I just ask Daddy for great grace, Lord, that they would feel a tangible grace, Lord, for the mantles that they carry. And I just ask, Lord, in this season of process, God, that they would feel your nearness, that they would, God, that they would even see the fruit, Lord, that they might, even if they see it in seedling form, God, that they would see the fruit, Lord, of this season and the fruit of, um, of the other seasons where they've submitted to you, God, and where they've taken in the knocks and they've they've submitted to process but God I ask um that in each of us, Lord, that you would continue to raise up a standard of leadership that is your standard, God, that we would be ones after your heart, Jesus, that we would lead like you led, Lord, that we would see like you see, that we would we would see the, the, see the one in the multitude, God. And I ask, Daddy, that in that spot, that we would lead well, that we would love well, and we would look like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm sorry I took so long. It's 9.36. Sorry.